Welcome everybody to episode 124 of the China Show, formerly known as ADV Podcasts. I got a question for you guys out there. Now, would you like me to be the cat? And if not, <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, let's hope not. Yeah. No one. I don't think anyone in the history of mankind wants anyone to be the cat. No. no. Let's get right on to it, guys. We've got quite the uh, show today. We're yeah. going to be talking about something very important that's happened with the whole China sphere. But, of course, we got some funny stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, you guys a secret. Yeah, what's it's that? A, it's a jam-packed episode. Have you ever heard that before? Nope. We've got a lot of material to cover. Yeah, we're going to saunter right into this, then? Yeah. Okay, let's get into what's new, where we talk about what's new, specifically with regards to China. In China and around China. And we've got something to show you here in the background. And uh, what is this? This is, uh, this is really good. Okay. I have video evidence mm -hmm. of China's lowest unemplo unemployment rate. Like okay. one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world that the Chinese government brags about all the time. Yeah. I have video evidence of that in action. Shall okay. We, shall we yeah. look? Let's take a look at the clip. So what's happening? Well, for the people that can't see, we have a really good chain of command. I don't know why they would film this because it really just outs them as being incredibly wasteful with, with human power. Look, there's one person... Wait, let's oh, go. Oh, 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 yeah, before, before we get to that nonsense, the first person I'd like you to, the guy, the person who's behind me, I'm going to get that out of here. He's directing. No, not the director, this oh. lady. Okay. There's a conductor that's. Yeah, yeah, there's this, a conductor, yeah. but the lady, the first one in line that you can see here right. on the right hand side, she's incredibly bored. Do you know what her job is? It's to wear army gloves and touch each box as her, it goes down Her the job belt. is to I make the inspect. box kind of straight. Yeah. See that, what she's doing? Mm. Which could be done by putting a little piece of metal on the side of the conveyor belt there to just kind of redirect it. What I want everyone to notice is that, okay, we have a conductor dude. Yeah. We have a lady that straightens the box, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want everyone to look at the sheer line of the people amount of doing people. this. That this could be done with, at, at most, three people. Yes. At bare minimum, one. <laughs> yeah, because this is just I, whatever this box is. It's got various goods inside. They're putting like a water bottle. Then yeah. they're putting some like a bag of chips or whatever it is. But yeah, look down the line. I count just by my eye here. Two. Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I can see fifteen people, yeah. and there's and that's at least, and it keeps going yeah. down. Yeah. So yeah, when they say we have a very low unemployment rate, it's true. You will see people flitting around doing a very menial job like uh, a street sweeper, for instance. They've got those like cut oil cans, you know, they cut the oil can to make it into like a, a what do you uh, call that? A pan? Uh, pan yeah, yeah, a pan. And they walk, yeah, they walk around and sweep up a single bottle every once in a while and stand around. Shh, shh. So, yeah. You know, uh, I think the biggest indic indicator of the low unemployment in China is when you go to a lower end supermarket, mm -hmm. not a high end one, a low end one. One for your now you have people that make two thousand RMB a month and under, right? And you walk into one of these aisles and there's probably, I don't know, ten ten employees in one aisle. Yeah, sometimes. just flitting around. Yeah. Doing nothing. Yeah. Just chatting with each other on their phone or chatting. Yeah. And they're usually like middle aged women to older women. Not mm -hmm. older, I say middle aged women. And they are doing Nothing. Unless you go into the alcohol aisle, then they start harassing you to buy stuff. <laughs> sure. Like, oh, yeah, you, you foreigners love alcohol. Here, buy this and this and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, if you walk around that, that supermarket, there's probably like 100 employees on the sure. floor. I mean, that's the thing. There is a problem with a lot of people in China, and they need to have jobs. They've got a huge unemployment rate. Yeah. Especially these, these days, you know, you get those uh, job markets. Yeah. People go rushing in, mm. and uh, it's, it's looking pretty good pretty bad for a lot of young people yeah which sucks yeah so they have to find positions to fill people in but it is like you know again just a kind of a they do this to inflate the numbers to say hey look we don't have an unemployment rate but what you've got is you've got a person sitting all day just touching a box which that's, doesn't need to be done that's the job yeah and earning a very small amount for it we got another very chabudua another chinese lesson for you guys if you didn't didn't remember chabudua Chabudua means half-assed yeah, or, half or like just good enough. Good enough. There's a Chabudua weapon here. So uh, the gun blade. I saw this being um, shared around on places like Twitter with uh, Chinese, Chinese officials and Chinese people sharing this out saying like China has invented a new weapon, a gun, you know, a knife gun or whatever, gun knife. I guess. But the, the key point is that people were putting it out there as if it was a new invention. Yeah. 
The Chinese military has invented this new thing. Also, what's the point? Look at this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Squall's <laughs> been doing this since 1998. Yeah, okay. well, it's not only that, but, you know, gun knives or gun blades or whatever you want to call them have been around for a very, very long time. Yeah. The Apache revolver. What was that? Uh, 19, 1910? Is it? Uh, 1860. 1860. 1860. Yeah. Wow. So it's not a new concept, but the whole idea that the PLA has invented this new weapon, because that's the way, by the way, I've noticed this happen a lot, especially the government um, officials. Now, whether they realize what they're doing or not, mm. they're constantly putting these so-called innovations, Chinese innovations. Yeah. They tweet them out there. Well, you know why, right? Why? It's because China always gets claimed as a country that can't innovate or invent anything. So the other day I was watching, they were saying like, what happens when there's a Beijing traffic jam? And they have this dynamic thing that shifts the lanes. Oh, that's not been around since the 80s in the US. Yeah, remember when we, we used to go like hang out, we were in LA and we yeah. go take the, that big highway down yeah. to the coast, down to San Diego, to the Mexican border. Yeah. That whole highway's got that, yeah. that they can shift that yeah. thing. It's not an innovation. To be fair, that was like the first time I saw it in real life. But yeah, yeah it's been around. But what I'm trying to say is that um, they keep putting these things out. Now, if you were from a country, I don't know, let's say you're South African like me, right? Yeah. You grew up and lived in South Africa and you know... We're very behind, you know, like the technology and the infrastructure in South Africa, although they do keep building new shopping malls and they build new stuff sure. all the time. The infrastructure is kind of a hangover from the 50s and the 60s. So all this newer stuff we don't have. Yeah. Okay. If I were to see that and I'd never traveled, I'd be like, wow, China's so advanced. Look at all these things they keep making. I think that's what they're going for is to try and right. impress you know, the developing world. Yeah, not not the US. So instead of saying like, look, we copied a US invention and implemented it, they say, look what we've invented or, it's you know, new. a European invention or whatever. And then people might get caught up in it. People might look at this and say like, wow, China is very innovative. They can make a, a knife into a gun. Meanwhile, this has been done since the 1800s. I'm going to go out there and say, and again, mm -hmm. this is speculation. Yeah. But that is probably the most dangerous thing you could use handheld. I can't even imagine the failure rate of something like that. Yeah, it's probably not very good. No, it doesn't even have a barrel. No. It's gonna shoot. Like, I just feel like that's not a good idea. It's from not, China. it's a stupid idea. It's not very effective. Um, it's not gonna be accurate. And uh, like you say, I mean, it could fail, you know? Uh, yeah. If you're using your knife to cut things up and you what block is the, the barrels. What's the point of that? I don't know, it's dumb. Like, I mean, the original one was dumb from the 1860s. Yeah. Like, if you read the Wikipedia, it's like it was bad, right? Yeah, I mean, because like as a as a military personnel, you'll have a long rifle, long gun. Like, you'll have your rifle, and then you'll have a service pistol. Yeah. And then you'll also have a knife. Yeah. So I think what they're trying to do here is get rid of a pistol. But I see on his they on his a pistol right there on his webbing, he's got a pistol. So, so he's got a pistol and for? a gun knife. Yeah, you're not gonna get into a knife fight. No. You know, in your average battle. You, and you need your knife to be something solid and yeah. dependable, not a gimmicky thing that's got moving parts in it and stuff that if you oh. probably try to use the knife as a knife to like chop a tree or something, it'll probably break. Yeah, shoot, shoot, or shoot, shoot the Or pee shoot out. something. Shoot. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, dumb invention, not an invention, dumb dumb implementation of an old invention. Pretty, pretty dumb. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Squall, my hero, yeah. one of my favorite games of all time. It's a great game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the original was already bad mm -hmm. that, of this. So anyway, what what is this? Uh shout out to Funk FPV. I don't know what kind of content he makes, but I wanted to credit him properly because mm -hmm. when we use people's footage, we credit them. Mm -hmm. Unlike certain channels <laughs> with us. Okay. Anyway, um links in the description if you want to check them out. But I just saw this going around. Uh this is hilarious. Just play it. Okay, I'll play it. Let's take a look. I, I clicked on this video and I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. We're breaking tiles. That's that's fun, right? And then I'm like, oh, okay. So he's got these tiles that are that are better, because he could drop his tiles, and when when he drops them, they uh, they don't break. And now we're going to go through all of them and drop them. But the thing I noticed was when he tested his tiles, he he didn't put a brick underneath of them. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe go back and and uh, do your tiles with the brick. And I mean, I'll buy some off you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, those um, actually I just thought it was interesting to point out on like Douyin or Chinese TikTok or whatever. They use these, uh, and you even find it on normal TikTok. Mm. Um, 
you they use these product placement people to try to sell like it's usually knives they always have like cutting paper like look sure. at how look at how fine this blade is and they cut yeah. like a knife or whatever or the some sort of hammer or mm-hmm. plates that don't break and stuff like this and this is just the newest thing that doesn't break yeah you know? i mean look you see that with shoes and things yeah. i'll take the shoes and like hit the, hit mm-hmm. it with a shovel and all sorts of weird things hey that's just normal sort of nonsense telemarketing stuff but yeah, yeah. it's a bit obvious when you leave the brick in there, yeah. you know, it, it's a little bit obvious. Show yeah. the brick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now over here, what's this? From our channel, you have a, I feel very safe now. 10 officers show up at 10.30 to check up on me. I thought it was great. You see more and more of this right now mm. uh, in China. As if, if you're a foreigner in China, you're going to get harassed by police, especially if you're posting stuff online. This person, I don't know why. I think it was COVID related. It is. Um, it's usually COVID related. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, there's this byproduct of xenophobia. Yeah. The Chinese government has taught everybody that COVID comes from the outside world. And yeah. most people believe that. Now, believe it or not, everybody, right now in China, the majority of the population believe that COVID came from the outside world and did not originate in Wuhan. And China is not at fault in any way, shape or form. It has nothing to do with China. It's some... Shitty foreigners brought it in or it was brought in by like foreign products or seafood or or, ham or, or clothing or the U.S. government during some army training exercise. And it's a bioweapon from the U.S. and Fort Detrick. Oh, and now it's a potentially a bioweapon that was made by the U.S. in Ukraine now. Yeah. As a, as what, whatever. The fact of the matter is whatever. Yeah. They feed this absolute garbage to the population. And so the population now eyes foreigners with suspicion. Yes. Okay. I've had people... Now, there's this unfortunate situation where foreigners living in China will contact me and you and tell us stories about how they've been... Racial slurs have been hurled at them, how they've been uh, treated very badly. But none of them want to come on the record and tell anyone about it because they're still living in China. Yeah. And they're so afraid of their way of life being disrupted. Yeah. Bitch, that's your fault. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you... If you're too afraid to just go out there and say, hey, I've been attacked racially because I'm white or because I'm black or whatever in China, I've been accused of being a virus. I've been accused of being a COVID carrier when I'm not and I'm following all the rules like everyone else. If you're too afraid to tell people that because you're worried about the repercussions in China, you're in the wrong country. Right. You shouldn't be in a country where you can't point out racism and xenophobia aimed at yourself. Yeah. You, shouldn't, you shouldn't be there. So this is what's going on is very often in a building, if there's a foreigner living in the building, the local people, you'll get some grandma or something, will just call up the police and say, there's a foreigner in the building and I think they've got COVID. Yes. It's that simple. Yes. By the way, you did forget to mention a very important cause of COVID. What's that? White-tailed deer. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely... <laughs> that needs to be a soundbite. Yeah. I'm just going to give us a clam, man, okay? <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, anyway yeah. seriously though, it's it's disturbing, and this is happening a lot. And I've got friends that are still living in the country, foreign friends, and also subscribers, and they constantly send me these horrible situations about how they're being discriminated against, how they're being shouted at, um, you know, all this other kind of nonsense. And some of them are in the big cities like Shanghai and Beijing. Some of them in the smaller cities as well, uh, being treated worse, and being ostracized. It's not a nice feeling. No. This is what's going on right now. And especially with all the tensions with Taiwan and uh, China blaming the United States for everything, especially if you're American. That's, you're that's a bad be, time to be yeah. American right now in and China. And unfortunately, they also just generalize. So if they see a, just a normal white person walking there, um, they'll immediately think they're American first anyway. Yeah. Unless you're up north, we'll always think yeah, you're, you're Russian. Yeah, you're Russian. Yeah, yeah. One <laughs> of the two. Anyway, um, let's move on from this one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's play this out and then we'll explain what's going on.
Well, let me explain what happened. Here. Sure. Yeah, what's <laughs> going on? They're called Chengguan. Those are the authorities. Now go back to them if you can. Yep. Chengguan uh, yeah. are basically like city management. They're below cops. They have almost no power, but they can also get away with just beating up random people on the side yeah. of the road. I mean, you say they've got no power. They actually have a lot of power. Yeah. Um, I should say on paper, they don't, right? On paper, they would be like if you had enough if you had any sort of connections, you're above a Chengguan. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have any connections in China, yeah. they're nothing. Yeah. But if you're like a street seller or something like that, like a, just a normal kind of nongmin, like a, like a countryside person yeah. trying to sell your vegetables, they have a lot of power over you. Right. right? And they'll kick your ass and they'll steal your vegetables and ruin your blanket that you put them out on. Sure. Anyway, these uh, Chengguan showed up in Nanning, which is in Guangxi. That's why her accent's so silly and crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, people are like, you said Guangxi people are silly? No, but her <laughs> accent sounds silly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the people are pissed off because they get to go. These people are on lockdown. Yeah. But they, the Chengguan get to just wander around and harass people like vegetable sellers, right? Yeah, and they need to get their vegetables from somewhere because yeah. they're in lockdown. Right? right, so the people are like, F you. Yeah. And they actually force the Chengguan out of the city. Yeah. Now, just... Well, out because, of the, the uh, out of the area, the Shaochu, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the the area. Yeah. Now, before everyone gets up into a like a triumphant, you know, yes, power to the people. Uh, this was being sent to me, and they're like, "Look, Chinese people are rising up," and I was like, "What do you? These are Chengguan. Yeah, dude. Chengguan these are, are thugs. They, they are just basically hired thugs that are yeah. there. It's called urban management. They they are the people that walk around, and if there's a I don't know, a food stall that's on the sidewalk that shouldn't be there, they're the ones that forcefully remove them. Yes. Yes. You know, the first time I ever saw Chengguan was kind of a hilarious situation. Mm -hmm. um, I just got to China and I went up to Guangzhou and I'm walking in, on the, the street in Guangzhou and suddenly I thought it was police because they dress like police. They have yep. the police uniforms. You see them there. Yeah. This mob was chasing this old man and this old man was carrying like, you know, they carry like a stick on their shoulders and they've got like baskets of fruit or whatever, you know, he's just carrying some random crap. Yes. And they were chasing this man. And um, I was like, what the hell's going on? And they all dogpiled him. So they all pushed him to the ground. And the next thing, one of them pulls out a knife. And I'm like, holy shit, they're going to stab this guy. But what, what had happened was he had tied a rope from his hand onto his stick <laughs> so that people couldn't steal his stick. So they would look, took this out and they sliced the rope away so they could take his, <laughs> his stick with his goods. Shit, I used yeah. to see Chengguan harassing people all the time. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, I've awful. actually got I, I got footage of them, remember, in Shenzhen where they were like forcing people to take down awnings and things in that urban village. I, I told you, I told you. <laughs> this is a mm -hmm. deep cut and you might not have any context why this is so bad, but I think I told you I when I was like the head of the foreigners basically at the crap university I was teaching at. Yep. Uh, one of the, one of the many I worked at. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so no one feels like they're getting pinpointed here. But sure. one of the staff, uh, she was, uh, I think she was British, but she married a Chung <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. And people are like, you're classist. No, listen. No. She thought he was like a high level cop or some shit. No. <laughs> or like a program or something. Oh. Yeah, Chung Kwan is like what you... You do, normal people don't become a Chengguan. You do yeah. it when you've run out of options in life. It's it's a thug, yeah. but you have a little bit of authority, and that's what makes them dangerous. Yes, they go around and they just they're violent. They're very pissed off, and they like destroying people's goods. Yes. That's what they do anyway. So they got chased out. I mean, it's a super community. repressed society, right? Like people yeah. are repressed as hell in China. So when you give someone an inch, uh, you know, it's not it's not uncommon for Chengguan to get like murdered. You know, yeah, they get well, stabbed. They do bad. They do bad stuff. Well, you know, they they take people's entire living. Like yeah. you'll have someone trying to sell some clothes or something on yeah. the side of the road or some watermelons, and they'll destroy them. They don't yeah. just like confiscate them. They take the watermelons and throw them on the ground Smash to break them. them. You know, remember they kill like ducks and stuff. They'll yeah, kill people's they livestock. They just kill people's Stamp livestock. Them. They steal all their clothing. They take everything. They take bribes all yeah. the time. Yeah, and so you know, some people lose it, and they're like, "You've just destroyed my entire livelihood," yeah. and they stab them or whatever. You know, it happens sometimes. Sure. There's big brawls happen every time. I don't want no chum. Chum is it? They're like scrubs. Yeah, they are. Okay, now moving on to Taiwan. Everybody knows the tensions between mainland China and the country of Taiwan right now are pretty high. Well, just China, not mainland China. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah, Taiwan's right. not a part of China. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, okay, so they're pretty high. So there's this uh, chip tycoon. You can see him there wearing a helmet. Now, uh, for those of you who want to know what a chip tycoon, I'm not talking about potato chips, the kind of not stuff. Not talking that about makes chips you, challenge. Not yeah, it doesn't make you fat. Doritos, you know, yeah. 
you know, computer chips, um, mm. which of course Taiwan is famous for being the number one leader in the world when it comes to manufacturing, uh, you know, chips, semiconductors, that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, he has just announced this new program, which we'll take a look. There's some continue here for those of you who might be listening to this. This old bloke is basically saying that we're starting a program where we're going to be supporting, you know, it's financially backing and supporting and setting up uh, basically a defense force. Yeah. Okay. He's going to get 3 million young people to get together to learn and give them the support and the, you know, mental preparedness and all that to defend uh, Taiwan against mainland China. One might say... Uh, give them the skills needed to bear arms. <laughs> nice. Right. Now, this is one of the most Taiwanese things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was waiting okay? for you to say. Because seriously, <laughs> they've called it Kuma Academy, and Kuma is Japanese for bear. Yeah. Okay, and they've got this cute or kawaii like bear logo. This bear with a gun. <laughs> so, if you guys have been to Taiwan, you will know this is so Taiwanese. But there's yeah. something even more Taiwanese. Yeah. Though. Also, look at the muted colors and the sort of pastel colors they've got in the logo. It's a little, a little logo here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm into it. Yeah, I it's, love it. It's cool. I mean, that, they try to make. He's trying to make it appealing to like kind of young people. Yeah. Like pick up. Hey everyone, just pick up arms and shoot people. Yeah, no, I mean, think about it. The young guys sitting there having their cakes and bubble yeah. tea. They'll be like, "Yeah, I'd like yeah, that patch I'll on my backpack." Some, yeah. I'll go shoot some Chinese people. Yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm gonna I'll walk that. around. I'll, yeah. well, I'll be hip with the chicks if I've got this little patch or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I, I like that. I kind of want to repeat that for those who um, may not understand this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, no, it is. As funny as this is, I'm making jokes about like, oh, I'm drinking bubble tea. Now I'm ready to go shoot Chinese soldiers yeah. and defend my country. What's well, true? Look, but that's yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> Look at what he says. China is bent on attacking Taiwan. No matter how friendly you are to them, or saying things like two sides are one family. Yeah, they're all not going to help. You're just deceiving yourself. Taiwan. The only thing Taiwan should do is to show that if you come and attack, we will annihilate you. Finally, someone's saying it. Yeah. Defend your gosh darn country. I mean, this is one thing that we've noticed a lot from China. There's a lot of this... Um, I don't know how to explain this. You know, China always tries to do like cultural exchange. I'll use yeah. that as an example. Yeah. So they'll say, let's do cultural exchange with the USA. Let's set up Confucius Institutes and Chinese students and scholar associations and uh, whatever Music else. Programs, All this other crap. It's art. A, it's a cultural exchange. Yeah. But have you noticed that you don't have American institutes opening in, in Chinese yeah. universities? You don't have the uh, American, American class. English, you know, association, yeah. language associations. You don't have the United Front and all this crap. Yeah, United States Front. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's happening is China says exchange. China says two-way, but it's mm. always one way. Yes. They're bringing in all their spies and stuff on all these programs and things like that. But then, you know, you cannot send anyone into China to do something that they're being allowed to no. do elsewhere. So uh, good commentary here. What you'll get from us is an explanation here. When he yep. says, uh, when he's kind of, he's the way he's speaking Chinese about the uh, two sides of the family yes, thing yes. is he's dismissing it. And the reason that he's saying it like that, it was translated well, but it's it's missing the whole him dismissive attitude yes, towards it. Yes. Because what that is, is actually a quote from Chinese propaganda. Yeah. They've been going on since Mao's time. They still use it. They say, Taiwan's just a long lost child. We're both just two sides of one family, blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah. That's what he's saying. He's saying, stop paying it. Stop taking the shit seriously. Yeah. You, you take up a gun and defend your country. And that's the problem, though, is when you look at the Chinese rhetoric, they're always talking about taking Taiwan back by force. Yes. They're always being, they're, they're actually very blatant about their yeah. attitude. Oh, yeah. It's, especially if you speak Chinese. Yeah. It's a different game when you watch Chinese propaganda in English versus in Chinese. Yeah. They're so a different animal. They're they're telling it they're telling the entire Chinese population, Taiwan belongs to us, we'll take it back by yep. force. They don't stand a chance. They call them all sorts of derogatory names all the time. Yes. And uh, at the same time they try to woo the Taiwanese uh, you know, public by saying, Oh, we're just part of the same family. Yep. Meanwhile, at the same time they're saying, Screw we you, we're gonna you. attack you and yeah. kill you and take you in a day yeah. and all that kind of so you don't Useless. stand a chance. You you American puppet. Yeah, that kind of thing. They say that like yeah. But at the same time, like, oh, we're part of the same. So this guy's just being straightforward and saying, like, shut up. That's not true. I, lo I love that. I yeah. love that he's just being honest. Yeah, he says, as long as I'm alive, I will not let the Chinese Communist Party turn Taiwan into the next Hong Kong. 
which is good because we all saw what happened to Hong Kong. The Chinese government had this whole one country, two systems trick, yeah. ruse. They signed a deal with uh, Britain, you know, you hand it back and we'll you know, treat it with respect and we'll allow the laws to continue. But they reneged on all of that stuff. They broke all of their promises. And now Hong Kong is really just... Uh, a, a real extension. It's a one country, one system. It's a hyper police state yeah. of China. Yeah, it's awful. It's really just they've lost all their freedoms. They can easily arbitrarily be detained uh, if they say something that the Chinese government doesn't like. You know, there's yeah. no real freedom of speech anymore, that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, let's continue. So this is, uh, I'm a now, um, you know, we were saying it was very Taiwanese. Let me move back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not. Yes. I mean, not only is it this <laughs> cute Japanese bear mascot thing, yeah, but uh, it's this whole press release thing, this whole this event, this junket, whatever you want to call it, is being held in a freaking cafe. Drip cafe. Yeah, drip cafe. There's that a is, lot of cafes in Taiwan. That's the most Taiwanese thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, that's what's great about it. Though. Yeah. This. Yeah. It embraces. It embraces something that it is, not yeah. something that it isn't. Yeah, because Taiwan, if you've ever been there, you know, this is a huge part of the culture. They yeah. love little cafes, and it's all about being very, I don't know, like artsy-fartsy, hipstery, sort of feminine-type uh, vibe that's going on there. But it's nice. If you see it and you go and enjoy it, you'll sit down in one of these really nice cafes, and they'll bring you a little little cup, and they'll have little cute cat things around. It's very much along that line, you know? So this, yes. seeing this with a cute little bear and all that was just like, yep, that's Taiwan. The Kuma Warriors, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it's the Kuma something or other. I'll, I'll get to it. I thought it was it. Kuma Warriors. No, it's uh, Kuma Academy. Oh, Kuma Academy. Yes. That's right. Kuma Academy. Yeah. So this is interesting. We'll keep an eye on this. But it's yeah. it's nice to finally see a grassroots thing in Taiwan that's not just sitting there and and like kind of hoping that China doesn't come, you know? Yeah. yeah you know absolutely. I mean? Absolutely agree. Yeah. So that's oh, kind of what's in what's in what's 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 it's cool. What do we got here? We got some pictures that one of our subscribers sent us. Yeah, so this is out of building, and uh, I won't, actually won't even say where. Yeah, we don't want to out where he is, but, yeah. you know, they have these lockdowns. It's happening a lot now. Um, we're, we've still got some new uh, information on lockdowns, but... You know, you put the lockdowns in place, it's not going to stop people from getting in and out. No, I mean, there's a fantasy that people are all following the rules. And if somebody with five minutes on their hands can go just take these photos and send them, it's probably, uh, it's pro people are not following the rules. Here's the thing. You have to ask yourself, why would they weld people into their houses? Yeah. And like nail them shut in their houses? Why would they have to bring stormtroopers, like hundreds of them to like barricade an area why would they do that that's because it's very difficult to get people to follow the law in china yeah yeah china is an incredibly um how can you put it? it's it's a stifling society in many ways the laws are stifling yes but people don't follow the laws yes you know what i mean yeah it's just it's oh, kind it's of it's pretty kind of, lawless it's kind of chaotic unless so, you're going against the government yes then it's lawless yeah. 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 So you can do pretty much anything, get away with, you know, being a drunken idiot on the streets and doing stupid things. But don't go against the government because that's right. when you really finally figure out that the laws actually have some teeth behind them. Yeah. But, you know, like you're not going to stop the IE who wants to go out and get vegetables. It, you can only physically stop them. That's the only way. Yeah. You can't tell them you don't do that. No. Because they won't listen. Anyway, so these are just some photos that he took of um, people escaping his compound. Now, what I want to show you here is on the left-hand side, oh, that side, okay, left or right, the screen's reversed. On that side, <laughs> you can see some footage uh, from not that long ago in Shenzhen where they are, they are erecting these fences with razor wire on top in urban villages. Now... Right behind us and above us here is footage that I took of the same sort of urban villages in Shenzhen. This is in Shenzhen. Let's just show it to you quickly so you can see what's going on. Um, they have been doing what's called silent lockdowns in Shenzhen. Okay. Now, the reason being, I spoke to some of my friends and it, it's very interesting just how how effective they've been at stopping people spreading news about these lockdowns. Yeah. 
speaking to someone in Shenzhen. I'm like, hey, I heard that there's some lockdowns in Shenzhen. Like, nah, I didn't hear anything about it. Right. I'm like, are you sure? Right. They're like, yeah, sure. Ask someone else. No, no, there's no lockdowns. I heard maybe in Nanshan there's some lockdowns or this and that. Then people get back to me. Oh, actually now I'm under lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? A week later. It's, yeah. it's so effective right. that people are not hearing about the lockdowns in the neighborhood over there. It's super close. Some yeah. of these places will ask about it. It happened in the same in Huizhou. Yeah. Talk to somebody. They're like, oh, there's no lockdown. What are you talking about? Everything's totally fine. A week later, they're under lockdown. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you're right. Actually, a huge chunk of the city was under lockdown. Yeah. Forced testing. So what they're calling these are they're calling them silent lockdowns. Yeah. And the government's even calling it this too. They're calling it something similar to that. So, <laughs> so they're trying to basically say it's not a lockdown. It's kind of like a small little thing. Um, but right now, I know that in uh, parts of Nanshan, in Shenzhen, at least from uh, yesterday, from the 1st of September to the 4th of September, they've got a lockdown. But they're calling it a silent lockdown. Whether it, get, it gets extended or not, I don't know. But that's what's kind of going on, is they kind of have these little blips of lockdowns here or there. Yes. Um, and this is happening in places like Shenzhen, where I used to live. As you can see above, you can see there are the urban, exact same urban villages, but now just kind of cordoned off. That's right. Um, and of course, they're happening still in Shanghai. They're happening all over the country. That's right. So uh, some of the, these other bigger cities have been hit. But, you know, the problem is people have got lockdown fatigue. They're sick and tired of talking about this. You're probably sick and tired of hearing about it. We certainly are because we think it's the stupidest thing for the government to be doing right now. But uh, another subscriber of mine sent me, and I just want to pull this up here. I want to make sure that I get this story straight. Give me a second. I'm going to pull this up here and find the guy. There it is. <clears throat> he said, Shenzhen on lockdown again. Stupid, pointless lockdown. Zero COVID will never happen. Tested every day. My son's school is doing online classes again. I've had both vaccines and a booster. The guards only pick and choose who scans the code before entering your garden, even department stores. You know, they just pick and choose now. It's not yeah. here, but whatever. It seems like other countries are living with COVID and getting on with life. But here, 60 cases lock everything down. Um, and this was sent to me yesterday. Right. Right. So... We got people right now in Shenzhen experiencing serious lockdown and their children are stuck at home again, can't go to school, all that kind of stuff. So it's still happening. It's not slowing down. You're just yeah. not hearing about it as much. No. Just so you guys know. Right. This ridiculous <clears throat> zero COVID policy, they just will not let go of it. Right. Which is kind of dumb because the rest of the world seems to have just moved on from all of this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. <clears throat> so, yeah, you want to be a prisoner... A great place. You want to serve time without committing a crime? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So I think that's everything we've got in What's New. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Interesting. That's yeah, it is right. interesting. It's really interesting when you put it that way. Yeah. Yes, you're right. So let's uh, have a super chat or two, and we're going to move on to the main segment, which, of course, is all about this ridiculous human rights UN nonsense. Which is not nonsense. Kind of is. Is it? Some of it is. You'll see. You flipping on me over here? No. Uh, Anthony Saints. <laughs> hey, guys. Always a great show. Keep on informing us what the CCP has done. Also, can I get a cotton? Yeah, you can get a cotton. Uh, you can get a cotton. Thank for sure. You can. <laughs> Doc Southington. Old Doc. Back again for the 124. And ready for a long weekend. Excellent. I believe we got Labor Day coming up, eh? Is that... It's where is you're that, going to labor. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, it's only for pregnant women. It's only for pregnant women. That are like expecting at that time. Sucks that we don't get a day off. Yeah. yeah. Um, Have you ever done manual labor jobs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was a lifeguard, we had to do like join the maintenance crew sometimes. And then we would have to like shovel and pick stuff and dig holes and rake right. the beach, cut down trees, that kind of stuff. Actually very re rewarding. Yeah, it is. Yeah. As long was, as you don't do it like all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, my, my dad owns a construction company. They make... Uh, landscape stuff and yeah. water features and ponds and dams and stuff so that was my first real job was working for my dad on site digging holes and mixing cement and yeah. pickaxe and all that yeah yeah it's a tough day's work but it's worth it it is it is yeah i tell you i shaved my hair for the first time once 
And I went to go work on site. The whole day in the sun, pickaxing and stuff. Was smart. Not very smart. My my head got such bad sunburn, and it was the weirdest thing ever. For like weeks and weeks, my my head was just like this this mess of like I don't even know how to explain it, but it was very it's like painful. Blisters and stuff. Yeah, it was terrible. That's horrifying. Yeah, it was a very bad. Surprised you're not bald up there now. No. Burned it's all weird. the follicles off, you know. No, it was very weird. It's such a weird thing. Anyway, huh. don't do that. Don't, don't shave your head. Don't do that. And don't then shave go... your head, period. Yeah, you know, I was going through a rebellious time. I got gotcha. you. Um, <laughs> people are going to cut your skin head. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think burnt, it meant... <laughs> burnt skin head. You know what I don't I'm think it, you meant it like that. No, it wasn't no. like that. It was back when, like, punks were doing that shit. I remember that. I remember when people were doing that. I just thought it was cool, you know? Yeah, it was like the cool thing to do back in 1963 or whenever you did that. Yeah, the cool kids. It was probably like circa 96, 97. Oh, okay. I was still in high school. Gotcha. Yeah. I remember one, my one friend like shaved one of his eyebrows off and he thought yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I remember people were doing that too. They're shaving their heads and shaving their eyebrows. You don't have to do that, by the way. No, no. <laughs> like... I, thankfully, God made me prepackaged with no eyebrows. Yeah, so you could just be like, I'm cool, you know? I'm cool. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to do any manual labor for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sasha, after two months of watching the ADV podcast backwards, okay. and man, oh, I see. So starting from the newest, going to the oldest, and many of your videos. Here I am. Instead of greetings, I said greatings. <laughs> oh. Great. <laughs> so, that is the most deep cut lore we have. Yeah, I, I think people are somehow massaging great into things that have nothing to do with the word. I miss Jaunty. We got to get more Jaunty, man. We love Jaunty. Nice. Oh, you know what though? We do have someone coming up. Oh, we do. Um, not as not John, like in the same, I feel like in the same boat as John. Yeah, yeah, you'll see later in the show. Anyway, he says, greetings from uh, Italy slash Czech Republic. Thank you for educating wow. and advocating. Never stop. Found okay. you after Tiananmen. I think you might like my new video if you're if you're Italian. I have a lot of Italian people commenting on it because it's about an Italian guy. Yeah, that's an interesting video. You should check it out if you haven't. Yeah, it's about a... It's how a, Rasputin ended up in yeah. China by using time travel and sorcery. In reality, it's about a man who... <laughs> Uh, was brought to an Italian boy that was brought to China and then abandoned there. Yeah. So he grew up Chinese, but he's like a white Italian dude. Yeah. And I got video and I pieced together his story. He's 10 sources. It's crazy. But I finally pieced together a story that it's not like a propaganda puff piece. And yeah. it's just what happened. That's cool. Um, and I think it's really good. I, I, I would appreciate it if you guys go check it out. It's in the yeah. description right now. Excellent. So um, yeah, should we move on? Going, yeah. Okay. It's time for Soft Power Hour, everybody. This is where we have our main segment of the show, and we tell you how China is changing the world through various different means, including uh, media, social media, that kind of thing, right? That's right. We have a um, hmm, we have an interesting one here, right? We're going to start out with this behind us. I mean, on the real background. Okay. Yeah. The United Nations Human Rights Office to the High Commission has just released a report on the Xinjiang Uyghur situation finally now look this report has been in the works for three years mm -hmm. china has tried to prevent this report from being released in every which way they can they, my gosh yeah. they've tried bullying threatening yeah. um you know undermining things they uh got the the miss bachelet the sort of high commissioner of the un to go to china to you know, they took her on a guided tour. You know what they did? Like the biggest flex that they did to try to stop this was be in the UN. Yes. And freaking buy out the Human Rights Council. Yeah. And become a member. I mean, look, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I have lost a huge amount of faith in the UN. Mm. Um, ever since they allowed China to be a part of the human rights, the UN human rights, um, whatever you call it, like uh, yes. thing. Uh, China has no place in the United Nations, especially not on the Human Rights Board. No. They have no place there. No. They've got such a bad record when it comes to human rights. One of the worst. Down so they're at the bottom five. The fact that they've got, you know, powers in the UN to veto certain things and, uh, you know, so on and so forth, is it's just a joke, really, if I'm going to be honest with ha you. Happy for them to be a part of it if they start behaving. Yeah, but at the same time, you, they're not qualified to be that's in the right, UN. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're not yeah. qualified. They're just certainly not. Um, okay, anyway, the fact of the matter is, they tried their best to stall this report. They tried their best to prevent this report. And it's kind of interesting that um, the uh, Human Rights High Commissioner, Miss Bachelet or Mrs. Bachelet or whatever it is, she released this report 13 minutes before resigning. Yeah. Before stepping down from her post. Yeah. So she waited until the very last minute to release this. And 
it's curious that she would do that. Why do you think she'd do that? I think she was under so much pressure from China, which is a member of the UN Human Rights Council. Yeah. Um, and I think that they had pressured her so much while she was in China and then prior to that as well. Yeah. And I'm not talking about pressure like, oh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Like, there's ways to pressure people, right? Sure. You can say, listen, this company you know might get cut off or mm. this person that you know might be, you know, we'll, we'll stop ties with them. Mm -hmm. Um we won't contribute this amount of money. I don't know what happened, right? But I'm telling you, there's ways that they can pressure somebody to not do something. Sure. There's a lot of people that are going to be lose their jobs or get hurt because of this. Yeah. You know these people you know in China? They're not going to be part of blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, she was pressured so much that I, at least I believe, that she was like waiting to the last minute to be like, well, I washed my hands of this situation. I'll release it, but then I'm out. And I'm not responsible for any fallout that happens. Yeah, after I think this. that's it. I think yeah. she's stepping away from the UN because she knows that the backlash of her report is yes. going to be bad on anyone that's in the UN. So now she could go yeah. retire and drink wine or whatever it is. Or whatever she it's likes like, to do. Yeah, can't start my morning without a Merlot or something sitting is she on a Minions a, fan. I don't know. Oh. But, Imagine Dragons listener. Yeah, bet. probably. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, I, I think you're right. I think that she was a coward. And she didn't want to face repercussions. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, well, I'm saying that. I, I truly do believe that she was she behaved very cowardly in this entire situation. Not only did she allow China to take her on this guided whitewashing tour of Xinjiang and capitulate to them all this time, but she allowed them to pressure her into not releasing this report yeah. until the last minute. Yeah. And that is cowardly. That is somebody... I bowing down and shirking yeah. their responsibilities as the human rights, you know, the whatever, the grand great commissioner of the UN, you know, whatever. I and mean, we saw similar actions with the WHO. Yeah. Now they're coming right in many ways, you yeah. know, starting to criticize some of China's actions and stuff, but not in the beginning, right? Yeah, this so is I, the problem. That's just my take on that is that she was a coward and she waited until she was just about to leave so she could drop the mic and let other people deal with the I repercussions mean, when she put out her spotify playlist with imagine dragons in the minion soundtrack <laughs> it should have been the biggest red flag sure, for everyone sure. right. anyway let's get into what this so anyway was, she released yeah. it and that's the good thing now let's talk about this now we're going to just gloss over some of the main points of this and also why i think it's also a cop-out in yes. some ways yes. so um <clears throat> china has this is coming from the report China has committed serious human rights violations against Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang province that could amount to crimes against humanity, the outgoing UN, UN Human Rights Commissioner has said in a long-awaited damning and damning report. But you see, it's this whole could amount to crimes, yeah. and it may have amounted to, you'll hear that too, may have amounted to, could have amounted to. It's like a step in the right direction. Here we go. Like, I mean... It's more than I thought, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good that that was said because then now it lays a kind of a basis for a more formal investigation to happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what this is. It's a framework to if you think about it in a court in a court yeah. context, right? This is kind of being we've been presented with this allegation. Yeah. We will now go try to piece together. Evidence, yeah, it's kind of like right? this man may have stolen, right. you know, something from there, and then you go and do the actual investigation. Yes, I know Attorney Wu could definitely figure it out, that's yeah. for sure. I mean, it's freaking three years too late, and of course China has already gotten rid of all the evidence and, you know, all that kind of... Same with the Wuhan lab thing. Yeah, they, yeah. All these big organizations like the UN and the WHO, they get they get stalled. I don't... I mean, like, I, I'd like to say, I'd like to think that going forward, when we deal with China, right, yeah. when we deal with the Chinese government and then their cover-ups, we kind of nip it in the bud in the beginning yeah. rather than two, three years down the road when everything's been torched. By the way, I, I'm just, I, I just want to say this now. It's unrelated, but kind of related. It's got to do with the stock markets and investments. Um, and I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial advice here. But what I want you guys to realize is that you may have heard of this whole thing that China has decided to abide by certain rules. Okay, because in order to list on the US stock exchange, you have to abide by certain rules. And one of them is that you should be able to be audited by the securities exchange or whatever it is, you know, yes. whatever that financial yes. crap is. And China has been opaque and hasn't allowed these companies to audit the Chinese companies that are listed for the longest time. So now they're facing um, this situation where they're either going to get taken off the stock exchange or they must allow people to audit. Yes. So 
Now the Chinese government has released this statement saying we will allow these companies to be audited. Yeah. And what this has done is it's created a frenzy of investment because people are now like, look, they're going to be openly audited. So now is a good time to invest. And a lot of people have decided to go and invest in China again now, seeing right. it as like, oh, now it's going to be good. Right. And all these big investment companies like BlackRock and so on. And if you have a retirement fund, uh, there's probably a big portion of your retirement fund is being invested in Asia emerging markets, which That's just means called, China. Right? Yeah. But this is a stall tactic because the Chinese government's like, yes, we're going to let you audit. And then they're going to take everybody's investment and they're going to keep it going for the longest time. And the people be like, can we audit you now? Like, yeah, of course you can. Just hang yeah. on. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. And then when they've got enough investment, they keep stalling it for the longest time. They're going to keep taking the money, taking the money, taking the money, investment money. And when they decide that they've had enough and they're just getting tired of everyone pestering them to audit or whatever, they'll be like, nah, actually, no, and cut it off. And everyone's going to lose their money. It's just a prediction. It's just a prediction. But if you look at what they've been doing with these other things, like the WHO and now with the UN, you can see that this is a tactic that the Chinese government uses a lot. Yes, we'll let you come and take a look at the Wuhan lab. Yes, you can come and do an inspection. And everyone's like, when can we do it? And they're like, well, only this, this guy, Balsack. Yeah, Balsack can come and do it because mm -hmm. he actually has a stake in the lab and we know him well. And, you know, we drink Baijiu with the guy. And then he comes along and then that kind of muddies the water and it takes forever and they just stall, stall, stall until eventually they've gotten rid of all the evidence and they can say, ah, oh, yeah, well, you know, there's nothing there anyway. Yes. Same thing with this Uyghur thing. Yeah. Three years later. Oh, yeah. Okay, finally. Anyway, just saying. I know it's off top topic, but if you do have your investments in, in China, in your 401k and stuff, not advice. It's not advice, but it is advice from the point of view that I'd be careful. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Okay. Anyway, let's continue on with this report. So um, the report, we're just going to go through some of the main key points here. And the first uh, key point that we're going to look at in this report is, of course, the whole um, crimes against humanity. So let's make a smaller there. I'll read this for you quickly. <clears throat> the top line of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights report is that the commissioner's office found credible evidence of torture and other human rights abuses that were likely to be crimes against humanity. Again, likely to be. Mm. I don't know why they can't just say it is. You find credible evidence of torture, you should be like, this is crimes against humanity. Yeah. Not like likely to be. Mm. Right. The report included allegations of people being strapped by their hands and feet to a tiger chair uh, for those of you who don't know what a tiger chair is, it's kind of like this metal, you know, medieval torture device. I've seen one in real yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you sit down on the thing and they shackle you to it. Yeah. And they use it during confessions and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and beaten, women raped, and others held in extended solitary confinement. Others appeared to have been waterboarded, as the report described individuals being subjected to interrogation with water being poured in their faces. Rights organizations such as Human Rights Watch have also determined that crimes against humanity are being committed against Uyghur and other Turkic Muslim minorities in Xinjiang. The UN didn't call this a genocide as the US government and others have. So the UN didn't go as far as to say there was any kind of cultural genocide or genocide, mm -hmm. but they said crimes against humanity. Maybe. Looks like it. Possibly. You know? Yep. Grow a spine. Anyway, let's move on. Anti-extremism. That's the next part of the report, like the most the other significant thing. Sure. The report was highly critical of the Chinese government's anti-extremism doctrine, which underpins the crackdown. It said that the laws and regulations were vague and ill-defined, open to individual interpretation, and blurred the line between indicators of concern and suspected criminality. Both categories also contained a copious number of benign acts classed as extremism, despite having no connection to it such as having a beard or a social media account. So, you know, that's true. We've seen that. We've talked the about Xinjiang that. Xinjiang police leaks. If yeah. you guys haven't seen, we did some very in-depth coverage of uh, the, the police, police files. files. What yeah. happened was uh, there was a leak in a Xinjiang police station. Yeah. And about over 2,000 mugshots and descriptions of crimes were leaked, and they're all documented on the website. And they were not happy about that one. No. That was like... Uh, that was like second to the COVID thing. Yeah. for They were really upset about that. They certainly were. Because what this ended up being was it ended up going into official reports like this. Yeah. And it could be quoted now. 
Yeah. You know, it's official document. I mean, like, if you look at some of the charges, they were charging, like, young children that happened to have been in a house yeah. when someone listened to a podcast. Right. I mean, it, it was, like, stretched. Uh, stretch someone prayed time. with their uncle, and now they're, yeah. you know, detained. That kind of yeah. crap. Um, he, okay, let's continue. Such indicators may simply be the manifestation of personal choice in the practice of Islamic religions, beliefs, and or legitimate expressions of opinion, it said. Accusations of extremism could result in people being referred to detention facilities at multiple stages along the investigative process by police, mm. prosecutors, or the courts. So it's very straightforward. They're just like, look, this is a very arbitrary, this anti-extremism thing that they put forth in Xinjiang. It's so open-ended that they could literally just pick up anyone for anything. Yes. Oh, you you looked at the wrong person or something. Now you're an extremist and we're going to put you away in one of our concentration camps. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the next point here, arbitrary detention. Do you want to read that one? Sure. Report found that there was an acute risk of arbitrary detention and that it was reasonable to conclude that a pattern of large-scale arbitrary detention occurred in vocational education and training center facilities at least during the 2017 to 2019. The pushback on Beijing's claims that the facilities were schools or training centers where participants were free to join and leave. The report said uh, such placements amounted to a form of deprivation of liberty. A deprivation of liberty occurs when a person is being held without his or her consent, it says. Consistent accounts obtained by the OHCHR, however, indicate a lack of free and informed consent to being placed in the centers and that it's impossible for an individual detained in such a heavily guarded center to leave of their own free will. Two-thirds of the former detainees interviewed by the OHCHR reported being subject to treatment that would amount to torture or other forms of ill treatment. Yeah, so at least there they're pointing out that what mm. the Chinese government was saying is bullshit. They're not just schools that people can you know, voluntarily mm. join and leave. I mean, we saw in the Xinjiang police files that they had shoot to kill orders if people tried to leave. Yes. You know? So, yeah, we all know it's bullshit. Um, at least that part's accurate. Forced labor. <clears throat> the report also pushed back on China's rejection of forced labor accusations, finding them to appear discriminatory in nature or effect and to involve elements of coercion. It said that the labor schemes were closely linked to the anti extremism framework and arbitrary detention which raises concerns in terms of the extent to which such programs can be fully voluntary. So yeah, why would these people be part of these labor programs only if they'd been detained or, you know, taken to these vocational schools, etc.? Yes. The next part, <clears throat> forced medical, sorry, forced medication and sexual abuse. Detainees were also forced to take, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I'm being a, uh... Attacked by like a sonic weapon or something. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about <laughs> sonic and knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, detainees were also forced to take medication or injections without explanation of what it was. It noted persistent claims of sexual abuse and violence in the facilities and government denials, which often used personal or gendered attacks against women reporting allegations, which is ridiculous. You saw that, right? The yeah. government officials calling like there's like a babushka looking woman. It's like fat old woman with a headscarf is claiming to have been raped and, you know, multiple times and they're saying oh no she's just a slut you know she's just promiscuous the, the state the state was saying that remember yeah, yeah. oh she's just a promiscuous slut right. this old babushka i doubt she's a promiscuous slut right. and even if she was that's no you don't slut shame someone who's coming out to say hey yeah. listen i've been raped by multiple people in this chinese concentration camp you know and they're like you you lying american yeah. scum you know, and like... we, saw, we saw this happen a lot with um you know uh, Uyghurs that had escaped yeah. China yeah. and that they were in like a Western country and they were uh, submitting their repi reports to like yes. the human rights commissions and stuff. Um, and they would say they'd been raped and the Chinese government would come out like, oh, that person, they're just a slut. Yeah. I mean, that was like on. a common narrative. And from Chinese states. official sources, from officials. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's a bad look. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bad look. The report also found the Chinese government made a clear link between frequency in childbirths and religious extremism. So again, they're like, oh, you're having a lot of kids, religious extremism over here. Yep. Because it says in the Quran to have a lot of kids, so that means you're being an extremist, so we're going to call that. Yeah. We're going to stop you from having those children. It said there were credible indications of violations of reproductive rights through the coercive enforcement of family planning policies, including allegations of forced, forced abortions, 
contraception and sterilization. It noted Xinjiang's rate of sterilization was 243 procedures for every 100,000 inhabitants, compared with a national average of 32. That's a lot. That's a huge percentage more. So these are the main things that came out in this report. Okay, sorry to bore you guys with all of this uh, long-winded stuff, but it's important. Um, now, just before the report was uh, about, you know, to be released, um, our, one of our favorite uh, wolf warriors, projection! Jolly Jen, you know, Mr. Projection himself, had like a press release to respond to various things. You know, they go and have these press releases yeah. and they get questions asked. Um, and uh, I wanted us to read through some of these uh, responses from him. So the Associated Free Press said, <clears throat> or asked Jolly Jen, Today, Michelle Bachelet ends her mandate as the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, and she has not yet released the assessment on the human rights conditions in Xinjiang. How does China view her work? Is China satisfied that she hasn't released the report? So this is just before it had been released, right? Do you want to read Jolly Jin's sure. response? The post of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is very important and comes with great responsibilities. China believes in the importance for anyone in that position to adhere to the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, strictly observe the mandate of the UN General Assembly, work under the principles of objectivity, impartiality, non-selectivity, and non-politicization, advance all types of human rights in a balanced way, engage in dialogue and cooperation with member states, and oppose the wrong practice of politicizing human rights, and double standards. My God, was that a run-on sentence? It was a, a <laughs> lot of <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. August 30, 31st is uh, Miss Bachelet's last day in office. As to the assessment you mentioned, China has made clear its for stern. Its, its stern, stern. Sorry, I'm getting yeah. blurry here. Yeah. Its stern position on many occasions is that sonic weapon. Yeah. Uh, we firmly oppose the release of the so-called assessment on Xinjiang by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. The assessment is a pure stunt orchestrated by the U.S. and a handful of other Western countries. We hope the High Commissioner will make the right decision. Okay, now again, this when you see the uh, Chinese government mention so-called, this means it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so-called is their new favorite thing, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they, they like to say so-called to try to delegitimize something. Yeah. So in this case, Zhao Lijian was saying the so-called assessment on Xinjiang. And I like how he says, we hope the High Commission will make the right decision. Is that not sound like a veiled threat to yeah. you? Don't say anything yeah. that we don't We hope you make the say. right decision. Yeah, don't, don't say anything we don't want to say. Yeah. Remember those hostages we told you we'd kill? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. That's on you. Make the right decision. Yep. But seriously, um, you can see this is just a bunch of bullshit. Uh, excuse the language. But this guy, this wolf warrior, is basically saying, she better not release this. This so-called. Anyway, just to show you that the so-called thing is really a thing that they like to do, in the exact same uh, press junket, um, Bloomberg asked Jali Jian this question. I would like to ask about a report that came out on uh, sorry Tuesday by U.S. cybersecurity firm Proofpoint. In that report, the company alleges that a Chinese hacker group that has links to the Chinese government was behind an email phishing campaign that targeted energy projects in the South China Sea, among other projects and government agencies. Do you have any comment? Zhao Lijian said. The firm you mentioned has no professionalism or credibility to speak of. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, recently, it has frequently collaborated with the U.S. government to systemically spread disinformation on the so-called China hacking attacks. There was Chinese. There were Chinese hacking attacks. Yeah. What do you mean so-called? Exactly. Serving as the white gloves of the U.S. government, we believe the international community has its own judgment on the firm's real intention. <laughs> White gloves, you say? Shimone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, honestly, though, uh, this whole so-called thing that they do, like the so-called China hacking attacks, everybody knows, and it's no secret, that the Chinese government has huge departments that are dedicated to cyber attacks. That's part of their... It's, it's been like that since the 90s. It's not new. Yeah, I remember hearing about Why this Why would you stuff deny that? When I was still in high school. Yeah. Okay. 
China's always been at the forefront, China and Russia, when it comes to yes. hacking. They're very good at this stuff, and they put a lot of resources into it. So it's not so-called. So whenever you see a Chinese official say so-called, you know it's something real. Yeah. And they're yeah. just trying to delegitimize it. Yes. Anyway, um, now let's move on, because the report was released. Okay. Not- and, and we, uh, <laughs> by the way, yeah, never mind. See what? the subtitles. The so-called assessment. <laughs> Dude, it's <laughs> yeah, everywhere. No, it is. It's just such a dog whistle. Yeah, the this. so-called assessment report. Um Okay, so it was actually released after that whole thing with Jali yeah. Jian. Yes. And then uh, we've got our good old friend here, Wang Yi, comes in. Yes. Who's another one of these wolf warriors, foreign spokespeople type people that work for the Chinese government. And uh, we'll just play this little clip for you, and we'll kind of paraphrase for those of you who are listening at home. So let's just play it for everyone at home. But I'll tell you, the first sentence that he says is this so-called assessment report. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it is an assessment yeah. report. It doesn't matter if you disagree with the contents or not. It still happened. Yeah, it's not a so-called <laughs> assessment. It is, a, it is an assessment report, whether you like it or not. Right. But he says the so-called that, assessment though. report. <laughs> you mentioned was planned and manufactured. We may as well just read it out for everyone. Oh. Turn off his voice and then we can just read it as he says it. Okay, you know what yeah, because I mean? his voice is annoying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's an annoying, annoying Wang person. Wang Yeah, sorry, not Wang Yi. Yeah, Wang Wenbin. I get them com- confused. Okay, Wang Wenbin. Sorry, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back. All right. The so-called assessment report you mentioned was planned and manufactured by the United States and some Western forces and is completely illegal and invalid. Illegal in what context? I, I don't know. What? But why is it okay. the United States and some other... Because like, if anything bad that they don't like happens, it's the U.S. that did it now. And some other foreign some forces. Some other foreign forces. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's yeah. crazy that. The report is a collection of false information. It's a political tool to serve the what? Uh, that was yeah, too quick. Yeah. To serve the okay. purpose. Yeah, it's a political tool to serve the purpose of the U.S. and the Western forces to try and work against China. Seriously, Western forces. I gotta be like, what are these Western forces? I don't know. But they're making up this this fake report apparently. This just, so-called they're... report. I mean, it's. They should be celebrating that they were so easy on this report. Yeah. Should be celebrating. Yeah. It was a win. It was a massive win when they're like, oh, there may be human right, like right, crimes right. against humanity. They didn't say like there are, right. which they should have. Right. Which will probably materialize. Yeah. But, like but, they got off easy. Yeah. They got off real easy. Yeah. Now he's like going in a rage about it being illegal and so called this and that. Let's take a look. Wang Nochen. I mean, Wang Wenbin. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, forces to try and work against China. The UN High Commissioner fabricated the report based on on the political plots of some anti-China forces abroad. So, you know Michelle Bachelet, right? I do. Not personally, but yeah. Well, you've seen her, right? Hold my Merlot. <laughs> yeah, hold my Merlot. Big matronly looking yeah, lady, right? So. Kind of the, the the cook at the, you know, in the school let's, cafeteria let's type. Slow down. I'm just saying that's that's the, the image you down. get in your mind. But this woman, okay, drinking a Merlot, cooking for the kids in the school cafeteria. She, so she does now since she's retired. Yeah, yeah. She volunteers. Yeah. She fabricated these lies. Yeah, she did. On behalf okay. of the UN. Yeah. By the way, they were convinced that they had her completely bought yeah. and paid for. And I don't mean that like bribed. I mean yeah. like we paved the way. We showed her what we wanted her to yeah, see. Yeah, they took her on like an all expenses paid tour of a yeah. whitewashed version of Xinjiang. Yet still, yeah, they backfired. And this is right. because of some anti-China forces abroad. Yes. Okay. Of course. Right. So, so she fabricated it. Yes. Okay, for some anti-China forces yeah. abroad. She did it personally. This this lady. The the lady that they've been praising. Yes. She, yeah, it's her fault. By the way, they were praising her yeah. the entire time up until yeah. now. Now all of a sudden it's like Woo! this this woman. Okay, but God that's... forbid the truth comes out. Yeah, okay. Okay, which seriously violated the High Commissioner's responsibilities and seriously violated the principles of universality, objectivity, non-selectivity, and non-politicization. It proves once again that the UN High Commissioner has become a thug wow. <laughs> and accomplice of the United States and the West. Anytime you don't get your way. I told you, I told you over and over again, China behaves like a 12-year-old bully. Yeah. 
It really does. It hasn't surpassed, it hasn't gone past that mental intellectual capability of projecting itself maturely. It has yeah. not gone past 12 years no. old. It's a thug. You call everyone a thug and a bully whenever it doesn't go your way. So this this woman, this matronly... Stop with the lunch lady thing. Okay, all right. This Merlot We don't, we don't swelling, know yet. She comes from Chile, right? Yes. Okay. There's a lot of wine there. Okay? Yeah, she's just definitely putting two drinking two Merlot. She's drinking Merlot, yeah. okay? Chilean Merlot. Yeah, so she's chilling, chilling out, okay? She's chilling Drinking out. a Merlot. Now she's a thug and accomplice <laughs> to the United States <laughs> and the West. Yes, because it didn't go their way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's not a thug. I, I'm pretty sure she's not a thug. Yeah, I didn't see I didn't see her down there, her you know, in the streets of uh, London harassing people and trying to steal their VCR and play it shooting dice in the corner. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? she's not like give me a wallet, you yeah, know, with a yeah. with a knife or something. With an Adidas tracksuit. Yeah, down. pitching up with a baseball bat yeah. to like break someone's kneecap. She's not a, sure thug. not a thug. No, or an accomplice of the United or... States. Like, she could be a thug in a good, like, thug life. Like, she's got a lowered car. <laughs> she's got a massive subwoofer in the back. You know, she's a thug. Yeah, she's a bit of a thug, isn't she? Anyway, but according to this, uh, the foreign ministry spokesperson here, she's a thug and an accomplice of the United States and the West. Because, you know, why just mention the West, by the way? It's, it's just a thing now. They, I like how they've othered it to the point now where it's just the West. So the United States is definitely like their number one target and yeah, enemy. Big time. And, and the rest is just random the West. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Interesting that, hey? Yes. Anyway, let's continue on. To fix, the, to fix the vast number of developing countries, the U.S. and the West have devastated Xinjiang. Okay. And the political scheme of using Xinjiang to control China is unhelpful and unpopular. Oh. Kind of like you. <laughs> and, is, and is doomed to fail. <laughs> they love it. Oh, that's the old one. That's the old one. Yeah. You got to understand China when you think Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, exactly. Sure. You got to understand, understand China. China. China has used, uh, so-called is the newest thing, but doomed yeah. to fail is like an old callback. Now, They've been saying that for a while. Now. now, listen, I just got to quickly play this out in Chinese because people might say, oh, you just added those, you know, you know, you didn't say, he didn't say those things. No. So if you can understand Chinese, I'm going to play it once through, uninterrupted. Yeah, we didn't make this. And okay. you guys can read the subtitles and listen to the actual t uh, speech. And if you're Chinese, you'll understand. If yes. you're studying Chinese, you'll understand. It's a good studying tool because it... It teaches you Wang what, Wenbin's Chinese what not to is very say. clear as well. Yeah, exactly. Also teaches you how to spot lies in Chinese. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. You said that this so-called report is that the United States and some Western countries have been made in a way that is completely unlawful. The report is a fake news. It is a political and military strategy for the United States. 人权高专办基于境外一些反华势力的政治图谋杜撰报告，严重违反高专办职责，严重违背普遍、客观、非选择性、非政治化原则。再次证明，人权高专办已经沦为美西方整治广大发展中国家的打手和帮凶。美西方霍乱新疆以江治华的险恶政治图谋，失道寡助，不得人心。Yep, okay, so there we go. You can now have it all in one go. Let's see what a ridiculous thing this is. So basically what they're saying is like, they didn't say what we wanted. What is that? No, it's just the comments are bizarre. Okay, good. Just, I can't read them. All right. But that's the thing. Like, the UN High Commissioner said something they don't like, so they have to be like, well, what? It's just one of these is... Wang Wen Bin here sounds like a water cooler being emptied of its water. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he kind of does. What? Yeah. How do you come up with that, though? I actually don't know. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. I love it. Guys, this is what you see here is just like absolute insecure nonsense from the Chinese government. They cannot handle that... Although the huge amount of threatening and grooming and everything else they did to try and stop this report from coming out, that it actually came out. They thought they had it in the bag after they'd, uh, you know, controlled this whole thing in Xinjiang with the bachelorette visit. Uh, Michelle ba Bachelet. Is she going to go on the bachelorette? 
No, if, yeah, the bachelorette. If she can get it, if she can get it, her shift off from Chili's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Chili's cafeteria. The Chili's cafeteria. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, now she is an enemy. It's interesting how uh, the Chinese government will treat someone as some kind of a savior when they're just saying the things China wants to hear. What? What is it? If you're laughing, you laugh, you've got to tell us. I just got to stop reading the chat. Yeah, all right. Well, what is it? It's just this water cooler thing's just taking a life. Of okay. All right. I got you. Um, <laughs> but we saw this with Tedros as well. Remember? Yeah. Tedros was yeah. like, "Oh, what a what a great man!" And then suddenly he starts questioning China, and he's now the the enemy. What? You can't just laugh there, and not share it with everyone. Don't be that guy. What is it? I can't. It's too obscure. Okay, well, try, try. <laughs> what? I mean, there's speculation that he wouldn't burn if set on fire because he's the wettest person in China. <laughs> okay. And that he moans when he wipes himself. <laughs> okay, all right, I get you. Uh, well, let's move on. And from... now the the catchphrase that was glug glug glug. <laughs> Long wing glug. Somebody please make a, a water, like, turn him into a water bottle glug. <laughs> a water cooler. Yeah, you know those big water coolers? It's like, like the square ones. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. no, it's like the, yeah. one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, you know? You see the bubbles yeah. rising up in them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, cool. Blorp, gorp. <laughs> yeah, well, Blorp, gorp. It's that. That's him, that's him. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> It's always funny watching these guys having a meltdown anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we ready to hit our next segment? Is it a Mr. Wong Wim Bin? It's moister. <laughs> okay. All right. Some obscure shit comes out on the show. You got to love it. You got to love it. Water, water cooler to blow up. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Okay. All right, so no, that's good. I, I love it. I love it. We got to we got to make this a thing on the subreddit, guys. That's um, what is it? Reddit.com forward slash r slash ADV China. He's storing water in his cheeks. <laughs> he kind of looked like he was back there. Anyway, oh. guys, let's move on from water cooler boy for a second. I'm. So, I don't want this to turn into the don't take drugs moment. I'm not. I'm, I'm as sober as a as a ghost or whatever they say. <laughs> yeah. What I will say is that that something about that water cooler thing really just threw me off. It's so obscure, but it makes but so great. much sense. Yeah, it's awesome. It's so apt. It needs to be made into something. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Water cooler diplomacy. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Uh, Woo! yeah let's, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Good. Let's good hit, game, a, good game. hit a let's hit a super chat. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll move on to our next segment. Wild FX says sea milk looks like a Laoban babysitter. Why a babysitter? <laughs> Maybe a loud one. Yeah, you're getting there. You're yeah. getting there. You don't have the keys on the on your belt. I'm yet. working on it. Yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. Uh, Cairo. Do you remember the band Guar? I do. Yeah, Guar. I was watching Sleazy P. Martini's live stream last night, and he was talking about you and showing clips. Guess he's a fan. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Guar is a fan of us. Oh, really? Yeah. That's sweet. I'll look that up. We'll find the clip for. Oh, someone post the clip on the subreddit, please. Yeah, that'd be awesome if you can. Um, we'll play it for the next episode. That's so sure. cool. That's Guar awesome. loves us. That's Hopefully, really they're not cool. like dodgy and weird. I don't yeah. know about their political inclinations, but that doesn't huh. matter. They're, yeah, they're a band. Yep. Uh, Just wave. Thank you very much. David Lopan says that's not a knife. This is a knife. And then he showed a knife. Oh yeah, that's that's from uh, oh, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Uh, I saw that in the drive-in or something when I was a real, little kid. I just remember the part where he throws the baked beans at the criminal or something. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Highlight. <clears throat> uh, Quala1203, rest in peace, uh, Tavares Pizza Man, Mikhail Gorbachev. Oh, yeah, rest in peace, yeah. Gorbachev, the only good Soviet. Yeah, absolutely. He's fantastic. He's put, put an end to the Cold War. <sighs> yeah. I hope that China will one day have a leader that will allow political openness and transparency to its people. And so yeah, do I. Me too. So do I. Rip uh, Gorby. Miss, yeah. Miss his, uh, what was the shape of his uh, liver spot? I don't know. It was like a thing on his head. What was it? it must have been a shape, right? Yeah, it was bizarre. It, if it was in China, they'd make like a talisman out of it or something. Sure. No, China hates Gorbachev, by the way. Yeah, they do. It is. You know why? Because it's the roadmap to opening up. Mm. And like, obviously, Putin has reversed that. But there was that time period where like China's terrified of a Gorbachev figure. Yeah. They hate Gorbachev because it shows like weakness and then the party failed and all this kind of stuff. Sure. Anyway, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh 
Wolf 93 cargo pilot went to Shanghai, could not leave the plane, ground staff in all hazmat suits. One of them came on board and he asked if uh, he could take it off. We said yes. Once he said thank you, this shit is ridiculous in English, we laughed. Okay. okay. Thanks for yeah. letting us know. Case closed 93. A Chinese friend told me that despite their war fantasies, World War II veterans were never honored or lionized in China like the way they are in the West or former USSR. Something to do with politics? Can you relate? Uh, I have heard that. <clears throat> The um, veterans are treated like crap in China. Yeah, but the the generals, the, oh, yeah. the PLA leaders, different story. Yeah, but just like <sighs> veterans in general, they're treated. Yeah, like they're crap. not. It's not a. It's not no. a high. It's not a respected position. No, no. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Ghost Wolf declassified. Thanks for showing uh, Saddam Hussein's favorite pet cat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where is that again? I got it right. Now, here. would you like me to be the yeah, cat? Saddam was a big fan of that guy. Wasn't well, he went to talk to Saddam. Remember? That's right. That's yeah. Right. And he was like, I love you. Yeah, I love your indefatigability. Oh, you? indefatigability or whatever he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, David Lopin says the gun knife is constantly flagging themselves. Yeah. So anyway, are we yeah. ready well, to move we'll, on? We'll keep going. Okay. Wumao Corner, where we talk about the haters and what they get up to and uh, all that other nonsense. And we've got something uh, quite interesting for you today. It's <laughs> Tanak. <laughs> Okay, so oh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. So we've seen a bit of a shift right now with the Chinese propaganda. Yes. Okay. Now, for the longest time, as you probably all know, you've had these very sort of direct attacks by foreigners working um, on behalf of the Chinese government. Okay, mm -hmm. you YouTubers and other influencers and people just working for state media, and they'll go out there and they'll be very. Um, like anti-American, very pro-China or pro-Russia or pro-whatever. And it's kind of jarring and annoying, but they yeah. seem to have dialed back on that somewhat. Mm -hmm. And they're pushing tourist stuff again. Yeah. Now, yeah. They have a current thing going on right now in China, which is China has just gotten better. It's kind of like a, yeah. it's, it's this whole campaign to try and attract foreigners to come back. Yes. And we've seen this a lot. Uh, some of the friends I have living in China – have been invited to take part in these campaigns. They've been randomly contacted through their work usually, and they want to be put on these TV and on this social media to kind of say, hey, China's great again. It's so wonderful. They, like, come and check out how cool it is to travel around China, etc. Even though it's a bunch of bullshit, the lockdowns are still happening. It's still not open and free like in the rest of the world right now. But they want to bring these foreigners back, which they chased out, basically. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so we're seeing a big uptick, especially surrounding sort of Hainan and uh, those areas. What? Wait, what? What? Oh, There's a lot yeah. of love for that place. Oh, though. yeah, definitely. Huai Hainan. Oh, no, that's Clam Man, not that's Hainan. Clam Man, yeah. sorry, what, sorry. what does Clam Man do again? I can't remember. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Are those? Can you? Can I have a look at those beaches real quick? Oh, yeah, the pro white beaches. Huai Hainan. Wow. Look at those white beaches. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I heard the food down there is pretty good. How sure. How sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We bring in live one of our favorite correspondents. We will yes. not name him because I honestly think he doesn't even want to do this. No. Kind of jaunty vibes. Yeah. Uh, this is for the People's Daily. Yeah. Uh, Rim and Shipping. So People's Daily video. Yeah. Uh, which is top state media. Yeah, it is. It's top state media. So, so what do we got a, going on? This is a foreign uh, correspondent. We've seen him before. I threw in his other clip later. But he, anyway, he's going to take us on a wild food tour of Hainan. But okay. you know what I've noticed about him? Yeah. He just doesn't want to eat anything. I don't think he likes food. Let's find out. Yeah, let's see what he has to say. Come on. It's right. 10 o'clock now, and this is usually the time to call it a day. But here in Haiko, Hainan, the party is just getting started. If there's one thing you have to do when visiting Hainan, it must be eating. Lao Ba Cha is a distinctive part of Hainan's culinary culture, as well as an important element of the night economy. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Sorry.
okay. it got somber. But the reason is, is that they're doing this food tour in Xinjiang. Yeah. So Winston made a great clip of uh, juxtaposing the, the people that lost their families to the concentration camps or have se been separated from their families by the Chinese government is showing these foreigners that were being toured around to yeah. deflect from that. Correct. They're eating they, they, delicious food. They very often do this. They they go to a spot that's like a contentious spot, like in Xinjiang, for instance, and they go and show like, oh, look, the food's so great because yes. people are saying, hey, there are crimes being committed yeah. here. And now they're kind of doing a similar thing with COVID where they're just like, everyone's like, well, there are lockdowns everywhere. They're like, no, come, you come here and you get to enjoy yeah. food. Well, I just wanted to say this guy, can you mm -hmm. go back to the Xinjiang one where he's in Xinjiang? We noticed that he was the only one in the in the kind of genocide denial crew that really didn't look like he wanted to eat the food. No, he d he dis dislikes <laughs> look at, look, food. Look at he's like, he looks at this food. do I have to eat this? He's like... <laughs> he looks so... Can you yeah. go in that last frame? Yeah, sure. He looks so disgusted. By the way, I love Chuar. I don't know what he's whining about. Yeah. But it's very right bizarre. <laughs> he looks like he's he like, doesn't... what is this? He wants nothing to yeah. do with this food. We notice with this particular guy is that he goes to these places and every shot where he's supposed to eat food, he takes a single bite or he pretends yeah. to take a bite or he just cuts. stirs it or something and yeah. it cuts away. Go back to so, the Hainan one. Yeah, if you look at his Hainan thing, let's count how much of this food he actually eats. Okay. So first of all, you want to go visit China right now? It's fantastic. You want to go the eat? Haikou Hainan. The party is just getting started. If there's one... Look at this party. It's thing him alone. To... Yeah, because everyone has to quarantine and yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. You when visiting Hainan, it must be eating. He doesn't look very enthusiastic. He looks, that's why I'm getting, can you throw a jaunty in there? Great. I, it's kind of that energy. Yeah. I'm getting like the, oh, I can't believe I'm here. Like, why do I have to do yeah. this shit vibe? And I'm not going to blame this guy. No, no. I think he's just, he's doing his little internship or something. That's he's been told to go around and do these things and he's not enjoying it. You could tell. Yeah. He, look at look at his face. He's like, oh, great. I got to eat again. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, the only thing I asked was don't put me on a food tour because he yeah. clearly hates the food. I think he hates food. I think he's yeah. probably anorexic or something. Maybe. Well, Maybe. we don't. We don't Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like I he just doesn't like food. He's got this great layout over here. I wonder how much of that went to waste. That's a lot of food. Yeah, let's see. Okay. It's like, I'm going to take a bite oh, of this. Oh, do you see how it cut away? Yeah. He probably he just, just... He probably just... Did a little, uh, and then put it back on the plate. Honestly, I feel bad for him. He clearly doesn't like it. No, he doesn't like any of this stuff. Yeah. The distinctive part of Hainan. Oh, he did take a bite he of that one. He took a bite one. of that one. It's culinary. He's, he, he's like, look, it's the same one. See this, like three? So he's just taking one. You see yeah. on the plate? Yeah. So it's the same one with different angles. He's chewing on. He's like, come on, get the camera off me. Just like Jaunty, this mm -hmm. is exactly the kind of person I really want to talk to. Yeah. I want like to have to him on the him. show. Like yeah. just straight up, no holds barred. I want to have him on the show and, and he can talk about like what they made him do. Yeah. I mean, look, quite honestly, it's that same. He's taken, that's the same one, but this is actually a later shot because look, he's eaten more of it. Right. You're really analyzing this. Well, I mean, like it, yeah. he's taken one thing, which he's sure. taken Part a bite of, of half. Culinary he's like, culture. Yeah. Okay. Well. Enough of that. You don't see him eat that, right? Right. And then well, he's like, as an Let important me element Let me look of at the night economy. And then he like stirs that thing around. You don't see him eating any of the other stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. The way he looks at this chuar, yeah. this is lamb kebab. He's like, It is actually a Ken doll. <laughs> That's. <laughs> right? It's like, it's just if you look at this, yeah. if you look at this right here, yeah. take us out of there for a second. Yeah, okay. If it had like text over on the right there, it would say like, Xinjiang Ken, <laughs> and it would be a new toy, and you can, you know how you like articulate yeah, them. Yeah. You can put us back in. Yeah. You articulate them, and you put the chuar in his hand like this. <laughs> Xinjiang Ken. He kind of does look is. like a bit of a Ken doll. He could be a yeah, Ken. He's a Ken doll. Yeah, a handsome little guy, you know. There yeah. you go. Okay, <laughs> okay, no, we know this. We know this. Anyway, um, it's the mukbang from hell. Yeah, sorry. We just thought we'd show you guys this stuff because you know it's it's happening again. The yeah. big tourism stuff. And when they're pumping out this tourism stuff, it's because they're trying to deflect away. Yes. Okay. And it's true, though. China's now got, gotten a massive negative kind of, uh, uh, what would you call it? Like, it's a bit of a, a, a negative look at China from the yes. Western world right now. Because the rhetoric that's going on, been going on with the whole Taiwan yeah. thing, them yeah. firing live rounds, this whole, like, war thundering, you yes. know, 
banging drums and saying that like we will you know attack and all this kind of crap sending planes Can we get over this guy off the poor guy off yeah the, the poor guy i'll get him off the the background here it's i don't um, not interrupt i just yeah you can have him i don't care yeah. get some get one of the douchebags on there yeah that's gross i don't want to see that yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> who's, oh, who's, who's that who's that <laughs> is that me gold I'm a leprechaun, me dear. Here. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, um, right now, China's really kind of chased a bunch of foreigners out. There's a very bad sentiment towards China in the foreign press and in around the world, really. People are kind of getting a little bit annoyed with the way things have been going. Yeah. So they've kind of, they're doing what they always do. They reach a point, they've gone over the edge, and now yeah. they have to quickly scramble to try and do something to repair the damage that they've done and one of the things they're trying to do is attract foreigners back so an interesting thing you'll notice is with the officials that keep going on about like we will attack taiwan and you know we will protect our sovereignty and we've just fired more missiles and we just announced new live fire exercises and all that now a lot of them are starting to just dial back and be like oh look at the beautiful hillside of yeah. this part of china yeah. or oh look at this these amazing costumes that the yeah. that the Uyghurs uh, wear, and then it turns right. out to be a Pakistani wedding dress, like we showed last time. Right, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. So they're dialing back, and they're doing the same with their propaganda, where they're now trying to get more of this touristy vibe going on. Sure, it's kind of interesting. So that's what we've got in Wu Mao Corner. Um, before we move on, though, <clears throat> we want to remind all of you guys that we have a show that happens every Monday. Okay, it's kind of a little VIP club. We have a little clip that we wanted to show you from last week for those we're of you who for missed it. So here we go. Foreigners. We were foreigners in uh, China. In China. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villains. Yes. yes. Yeah. Scumbags. Complete scumbags. I was such a douchebag. Just a porky mother effer. Jesus didn't like you very much, boy. I was yeah. a piece of shit. Completely illegal. He's just a disgusting man. He used to get in street fights. Every time he got drunk he'd want to fight. So I was a weeb. I was like yeah. a real nerd weeb. They'd be like, hey, hey, come yeah, on. I was such a douchebag. Just a slob of a man. Fat, slobbery kind of sl horrible guy. And I didn't have to be a douchebag because okay. he pissed the bed or whatever. He should have been executed oh, by whoa. fucking... But I was the douchebag. That guy was himself. a scumbag. What? Dude, F you. Whatever, yeah. just... What the hell, man? I, I can do I what I want. Babies. Woo! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I knew foreigners that used to get drunk and then walk around naked doing absolutely dumb stuff, be, raging okay, alcoholics, yeah. drink driving, they're being publicly intoxicated. Yeah. The semen, like on animals and stuff. semen shows up. Semen, come out of the bathroom. <laughs> okay, uh, for those of you curious, we were talking about the, the worst foreigners we'd met in China. Yeah. That was the whole point of... Uh, Where can you find that? Oh, you can find that if you go to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. Join the Shaban Ho tier and, you know, you can see all the past episodes. And of course, you can catch us live on Monday. So if you're interested in checking that out and being a part of this kind of little VIP club thing that we have, please go ahead. It's a live show, but all the shows are up there. So yeah. if you join now, you can still watch all of the nine episodes we've had so far. It's, it's super fun. <clears throat> yeah. It's nice. It's a very intimate sort of a, a setting and we like it a lot. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, here's something that you should tell everybody about over here. Is this Worldview? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess then we're going to move straight to it, eh? Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. Okay. And right now we have something about some food poisoning. Do you want to explain this? Yeah, actually, somebody on our uh, subreddit, I think is a Chinese-Canadian dude. Mm -hmm. um, I just really loved what his commentary here, and it added some context to this. So mm -hmm. basically, a Markham, a Markham's in Toronto. Okay. I used to go there all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I would go there. It wasn't to buy bootleg DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely to observe the culture. Actually, what I would usually go there for is for authentic Chinese food. Oh, I Huge. thought you'd go there just to drink because, you Of know, course, yeah. You couldn't Americans, drink Americans, what we do yeah. is if you live near Canada like I did, mm -hmm. what you do is you would drive up and you could drink in Toronto when you're 19 as opposed to 21. Right? So, so bizarre, this 21-year rule thing. Yeah. So that's what we would do. Anyway. And anyway, we'd, I'd go to Markham and get really good dumplings and good Chinese food there. Right. Anyway, there was uh, suspected po food poisoning. Um, and it was at a, uh, you know, like a, like a barbecue restaurant. It's called Delight Restaurant. Yeah, that's right. Delightful, so, delightful food poisoning right here in the Shuangxi 
I got the Shuang Shi sign on there. Yeah. So anyway, they um, closed the restaurant because there was patrons that fell ill, right? Right. And I wanted to read this guy, this Chinese Canadian dude's um, commentary about this. He says, mm-hmm. "So this happened recently in my city. Turns out someone used aconite as an ingredient, or common monk's hood, right? Better known as wolf's bane. Okay. Which is a highly poisonous herb, right? Yeah. Sounds like something that a a witch throws in her pot. It truly sounds like we're about to fire up a game of Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, Wolf's Bane. And... Yeah, or we're watching like, uh, I don't know, we're playing D&D or something. Something like that, yeah. Uh, it's highly poisonous. It is never used as medicine or for cooking as it contains no actual beneficial features, right? My pro CCP or TCM supporting parents say, oh, like all medicines, too much via overdosing can be dangerous. And this is what... Pro traditional Chinese medicine people say in China is that everything is bad if it's just too much, but if you use a little bit, that's good, and that's yeah. why Western medicine is bad because they just use too much. Right? Yeah, which can be actually dangerous when it comes to people with an allergy, like a severe sure. peanut allergy. They'll be like, "That's okay, man, man, lie. Just have a little bit, and you'll be okay." Yes, you gotta watch out for that. So his parents said, "Oh, like all medicines, via too, uh, too much via overdosing can be dangerous." To justify whomever at the restaurant added the poison to the dish, right? Like the belief that the tingling, bitter taste means that the medicine is working or some such nonsense. Sure. And that is the thing. They'll say, oh, that tingling, that bitterness, that means it's working. That means it's, you're not supposed to enjoy it. It's supposed to make you feel bad because that means the medicine's working. Yeah, it means it's working. Bullshit. It means it's poison and your body's rejecting it. Yes. They keep trying to peddle this um, or this snake oil with dubious medicinal qualities on any health issue with zero knowledge of what the actual cause is. I recently injured my back, and my mom keeps trying to push this ointment made up of turpentine and menthol on me, saying that it'll soothe my pain and fix up the in- injury. I humored her and tried it out for a week, but as suspected, it did squat all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out, after an MI- MRI, there's a cyst on my su- spine, pinching a nerve, which needs to be drained and removed. So nothing TCM can fix. Sure. I wouldn't be surprised if TCM is continuing their problems instead of actually solving them. And thank you for saying that. That is something that... I have been harping on about for so long. I know people get sick of me talking about DCM, but it's so detrimental to facing actual medical issues. Yeah. Instead of facing actual medical issues, getting an MRI, getting your lung scan, getting your brain scan, checking for tumors, for God's yeah. sakes, an herb or some tincture from traditional Chinese medicine is administered instead of actually facing the real problem. And yeah. that to me is immoral and bad. And sure. I hate that. I think that's bad. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. But you know, look, you get that in all cultures, and I'm not doing this as a water bath sure, or something. No, I get you. But you know, for instance, my parents believe in a lot of that sort of uh, homeopathic type stuff, which you know, same thing, really. Love your parents, but yeah. homeopathy. Let's same thing. Let's get out of the '70s. Yeah. Let's get back to 2022. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same thing. You know, yeah. like have a sugar pill, and it's going to make you better or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, in some cases, uh, it's the belief that it's fixing you actually fixes it. You know, <laughs> David Newfeld says. TCM promotes a Darwinism. <laughs> it does. Yeah, you know, they've done studies. I've mentioned this before. We've mentioned it before. But a lot of the TCM um, ingredients actually cause cancer. And people, yeah. you know, yeah. it's unfortunate. It has the opposite effect. And who, was it one of your Chinese relatives or one of my Chinese relatives got throat cancer from drinking hot tea? Uh, one of mine. It was one of yours. Yeah, yeah it was one of those. Like, yeah. you may as well Turns out if you scald your throat... Over and over again, building scar tissue, it turns cancerous. Yes. What a surprise. And it's funny because that same treatment, mm-hmm. drinking hot water, he ri shui, if you, yeah. that's the most common phrase you'll hear in China, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. More than like... He doi dian ri shui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's literally what you'll hear everywhere. Drink yeah. more hot water. That is used as a cure-all even for throat cancer. So it turns out that's what was causing it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, look, there, there are certain beliefs. And the problem is it's not regulated. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. That's the biggest issue is you can go to any of these little clinics in China and you can get your TCM and they'll just go like, okay, go there and get whatever. Yeah. You can yeah. mix this crap. They mix it up There's together. no central authority. Mm. By the way, why do you think it's called wolf's bane in the first point, like, I'll look place? Because do, wolf, do wolves awesome. eat it and then they're like, oh man, I really regret that and they roll around or something? Wolf's bane. Why is it called that? It's got to have a reason. What's the entomology? You're gonna uh, figure wolf's it out. bane, yeah. It's the bane of wolves. What is a cockchafer beetle? <laughs> I don't want to know. What is a cockchafer beetle? 
I don't know, but what does it have to do with Wolf's Bane? I don't know. Bane? When I looked up Wolf's Bane into entomology, it came up with a cockchafer beetle. Okay, well, we're probably going to figure, probably gotta figure out what that is. Anyway, it's called Monk's Head, Wolf's Bane, Leopard's Bane, Mouse Bane, Woman's Bane, Devil's Helmet, Queen of Poison, or Blue Rocket. Wow. It's a genus of over 250 flowering plants. Why is it called Wolf's Bane? Why is it's... it called Wolf's Bane? Yeah, we got to know, right? Yeah, I just don't want to see those cockchafer beetles anymore. It's okay, yeah. Uh, names Wolfsbane comes from an old European practice of poisoning wolves with meat scraps laced oh. with aconite roots. Now, they see, that, that makes actually sense. makes sense. That's cool, actually. So Not you... killing the wolves, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay, so they, they really don't like it. Wolves are like, ah, man, that damn it, wolves. That, it's kind of like Looney Tunes. They're yeah. like, ah, got me again. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is the bane of us wolves. Yes, they have a okay. meeting. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. You're going to have to look, look up cockchafer cock beetle at some point, maybe during Yamcha. Okay, I yeah. will. I promise. Yeah. I'm going right. it in. Now, look, we've got to talk about drones here for a minute. Um, the footage you're seeing behind us right now is of uh, the... It's real! What? It's a cockchafer. It's cock <laughs> Yeah. Okay, It's ahead. a cockchafer. Okay, we'll figure Oof. out why. <laughs> okay. Um, probably has something to do with roosters. We'll find out. Okay. Um now, the Jinmen Island, which is just off of the uh, coast. Been there. Yeah, cool. You've been there. I haven't actually been there. It's we part go. of. Let's go. Yeah, it's part of Taiwan. We can go look at China from like I, a couple hundred meters. I saw it from the China side. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, was I there? What year was it? Uh, it must have been about 2010 ish. Prick. <laughs> what? We might have seen each other. What, oh. Wouldn't that be weird? That would have been very weird. Yeah. Because you know, like when you go to Xiamen and all those areas, you can go off to yeah. those islands yeah. and stuff there, and they have like a kind of a fake close. Taiwan, and you can look over and you can see. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's close enough that you can fly a drone. Yes. Oh, okay. easily. So the Chinese military has been flying drones over to um, Jinmen Island over here, where of course you've got a Taiwanese military base, and they're there keeping an eye out to see if there's an attack happening. You know, mm -hmm. because China's always threatening to attack anyway so they're like well we may as well keep an eye out so um what happened here is the taiwanese soldiers were taken unawares by look how they had to blank out the taiwanese flag did you see that yeah they blanked it out so like this this has come straight off the chinese <laughs> internet by the way they can't this, even post yeah it's on Weibo. yeah this clip comes off the chinese internet and now there's a taiwanese flag up there which is pixelated they can't now. Even show a Taiwanese they can't flag. even show the flag. Guys. If you try to post this <clears throat> clip on the Chinese internet with the Taiwanese flag, it'll just get scrubbed. Does that remove the context? It's because they don't want people to know that Taiwan is self administering Yeah, that it has its own flag. So look, they actually censored the flag, which is one of the biggest takeaways from this video, right? But anyway, so the, this drone flies in, this Chinese military drone, okay? And the soldiers are like, what the hell are we going to do here? And so they spot it and they Can't radio. Believe they censored that. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It's so dumb. They have to censor that. By the way, they, they better fix that wall. I got to say, it's pretty poor form. Uh. You know, a little parapet wall. You see how it's cracked there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. Taiwan, I expect more from you. Anyway, um, so you can see that these guys are putting on their masks because they don't want to be identified and they're calling because they probably don't know if it's one of their own drones or yeah, whatever is sure. going on. Yeah. Um, and then they see, okay, there's a drone. And of course, this has been going around the Chinese internet and everyone's applauding, like, look how weak their defenses are. We can fly a drone in there, you know, that kind of crap. Yeah, it uses um, like soft power. Yeah. <laughs> so they're running off to their commanders and stuff. Uh, now, here's the thing. <clears throat> China. I was waiting. For okay. Yeah. As in the, the Chinese government and the Chinese military. Um, they are very good at doing these missteps and then just making excuses. Yes. So that particular one that was going around, nobody claimed responsibility. No. The Chinese government didn't say, oh, look, we sent that drone over, but it's flying around the Chinese internet, you know, this drone footage of the Taiwanese soldiers, they threw stones at the drone. Yep. You know, and they were like, oh, look at this. Stone the drone. They were like st stone age, you know, soldiers, yeah. and they suck, and look at how powerful our Chinese are that we can send this drone. Uh, and the Chinese government did nothing about it. They let it proliferate. They're very happy about it. But now China sent another drone and the Taiwanese were like, screw this and shut it down. Yes, correct. And now they're all like, oh, they shut down a civilian drone. They, had, they had to say that. I mean, when it's convenient, right? Yeah. Here's the thing. Now they're calling it a civilian drone that got shut down, not a government one. Because, <laughs> I mean, here's, here's the thing. And I, I pose this question to you. You've got a very tense situation. 
mm-hmm. okay, between mm-hmm. Taiwan and China. Mm-hmm. That coastal region right there is the most scrutinized area of China right now. Potentially in the world. Yeah. It is under so much mass surveillance. They've built up huge amounts of military over there right now. They've been firing missiles into the sea there. They've got rocket launchers. They've got tanks. They've got the PLA. The military's ready to, like, go and invade Taiwan. You saw the big buildup, right? Yep. It is the most militarized area of China right now with, like, the whole Chinese army sitting there on the beach, basically, just waiting to go. Yes. How is a civilian... Gonna fly a freaking drone over to Taiwan. First of all, any action like that could spark off a conflict. A war. A war. So the Chinese government is not going to allow that to happen. Especially since being a drone pilot myself, I got into so much shit multiple times in China flying my drones. Yeah. Where the security was called on me, where the the police would come and stop me. We had the PLA take our drones apart. And I'm talking about me just doing something like flying in a nature area or something. I'm not even talking about trying to fly anywhere Mm. near like a a military base or anything like this. So imagine trying to fly a drone in the most heavily militarized area of China right now. Yeah. No civilian will be able to do that. They'll be stopped immediately. Absolutely not. It's got like every radar, every possible monitoring system is active in that area right now. Yeah. You try to take off a drone, you're screwed. Never mind the fact that DJI, which is what the drones that the public have access to, has completely blocked that area off and you cannot take off nope. using the software. You cannot. No. It's impossible. If you try to take off a drone there, it's like, no, this is no. a secure area you can't fly. Right. And you've come across that if you go anywhere near an airport or something, it's like, this is not an area yep. you can fly. So for them to turn around and say that this was a civilian drone is a lie. You know what it was? It was a so-called drone. It was a so-called civilian drone. Yeah. Um, and so... This is a kind of an interesting tweet from the uh, Chinese government official said this Zhang Meifeng, who I constantly, you know. She's your favorite. Yeah, she posts such garbage. It's just impossible not to respond. She's a state official. Yeah, she is. See, it says China government official. She's got the label. Yeah. She said, and to think, just one month ago, there was peace in the hashtag Taiwan Straits uh, with mutual understanding. by all nations of the hashtag one China principle. Then along comes the hashtag US and its warrior ways with the hashtag Pelosi provocation. And here we are. And then she shares this thing where it says Taiwan fires live rounds at drones near outlying islands. You know, she's the consul general of the Toronto consul, Mm -hmm. which is the consulate that tweeted at me. Remember Mm -hmm. that rant? Yeah, I remember. (laughs) So um, I said, I just replied to her and said, you're the ones causing all this. Why are you invading Taiwan airspace with your lame drones anyway? Right. You know, that's the thing. Look at how they're trying to blame America for the fact that they're flying drones into Taiwan's they airspace. Yeah, yeah. Just don't do it. Yeah. Simple. Just don't fly a drone into someone's like island and get it shut down. And you'll be okay. And again, it is the government. And it's crazy that they're doing this anyway because it's such provocation. That's yeah. kind of like a war. You know, that's a declaration of war. We're going to fly an aircraft, an unmanned aircraft, into your airspace and go and spy on your soldiers and stuff like that. That's just not okay. Yeah. It gets yeah. shot down and then all of a sudden, oh, no, it's just a civilian drone. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm sure you're allowing civilians to fly drones over there to the Jinmen Island. I doubt it. This is like water cooler diplomacy. Yeah, it is. It certainly action. is. Anyway, I just um, thought anyway, we'd talk you, about that. Yeah. Can you pull up uh, the photo that I included? Oh, I'm sorry. Do Which? First. Okay. Just just another kind of nonsense thing, these political cartoons where they're trying to, um, I don't know, pretend as if America's trying to catch up to China's space program or something like that. Yeah. Whereas it's kind of a little bit late. The cartoon I've yeah. ever seen. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a bit late, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's a little late. Yeah, just thought, thought we'd throw that in there. It happened in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what picture did you want to bring up, Daruji? Uh, no, that's for... for... For Yamcha. Oh, for Yamcha. Remember, okay. I put a picture on the desktop. Oh, you did. You did. Okay, yeah. Let a me bring worm, that up. A worm photo. It's going to be an interesting one to open. I wonder if I could do it this way. Give me a second. Sure. I'll read a super chat. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, Will Smith says, keep feathering it, brah. Keep uh, following protocol. Don't stop going after CCP, doing the Lord's work. Keep it high and tight. Thanks. By the way, ignore this background. I'm just trying to do something right now, and I'll fix it. Yeah, keep going. Uh, Ryan G says, would you hire a B team to help out Worthless Whips? We don't. We, would, we do not have the money for that, but I appreciate it. 
Spanish yeah. uh, influenza says, so glad to catch you guys live. Uh, probably the only podcast I can watch without getting bored. Love you guys. Keep it up. Thank you for that. I Thank appreciate you. Appreciate that. it. Yeah. Uh, did you figure it out yet? I'm getting there. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I certainly am. Give me a I second. Somehow feel like this is not going to work and I can just tell them where to go. No, no. I figured it out. I just going to drag this around. There it is. I did it. See? Look at that. What's this? What is this amazing thing that you can see behind us here? This very large image. Why do you mean large? Why would it not be large? Because it was small. Um, I made it large. What is this? This is a t-shirt we're selling. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad you came around. This is, uh, I'm trying to figure out what the website is. Everpress.com <laughs> slash, <laughs> okay. no, don't follow. Just go down and get the link. It's literally the first thing in the description. Yeah, the Unger Warm t-shirt. This is very important. What is an Unger Warm? Unger Warm is uh, Warm Unger, which is uh, what they were calling the fake separatist, so-called separatist group in yes. Taiwan is calling Pelosi when she visited Taiwan. Yeah, uh, they so, couldn't get their spelling right. And so no. instead of saying Warm Unger, they made signs that said Unger Warm. So in order to celebrate their stupidity, we made this merch, but it's limited. It's only available for another week, right? I think only about a week. And yeah. this is not going to be re-released. Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a once-off. Yeah. Once-off. So once if you off. want to be a part of the Angle Warm crew, yeah. wear it proudly because it'll be a good conversation starter. Let's put it that way. Yes. Uh, please feel free to go ahead to the link below and head on Sounds over and good. get yourself one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's on Everpress. So look for the Everpress link. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. So... What would you like to do next? <laughs> Did you just call me that? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's get on to a yum cha. Yeah, guys, it's yum cha time. Favorite part of the show where we get to relax. I get to loosen the tie finally. Uh, and we get to basically chat about things, answer your super chats. Uh, by the way, if you are watching this live, you'll get to watch it. If you don't catch us live, it's still up for the weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show, but patrons can always watch it whenever they like. So let's move on. Oh, yeah. And for those of you leaving us now, stay awesome. What um, do we got? We had a Daruchi sighting, actually. Oh, we did. Yeah, let's get back to that. I thought this one was pretty funny. Um, From our, uh, why am I doing that? Why am I? Mm, let's see. Let's get past that nonsense. There we go. Daruchi. Oh, get us a smaller in the corner. This, is, uh, this one is in Australia. This mm. one I thought was funny for a very specific reason. Uh, and that's in the next slide. Oh, yes, yes. This is a pretty funny one. It's very Chinese. They used very Chinese logic, mm -hmm. like marketing logic, but in Australia. And I love this. They put the design. So this is a, a Chinese company from Dongguan. It's yes. just like an OEM mattress company. There's nothing yeah. special. I read an expose in China about it in Chinese. Yeah. Um, it's just a fully Chinese company. Right? Yeah. Um, but they have these designers here. And this one says designer from Italy, designer from France, designer from Denmark, designer from Britain. Britain. Sorry, it's small. Britain. Um, Britannia. Yeah. And they have these people. I, I want to know if these people are real. I, I mean, I have a feeling that they're just <laughs> random, monkeys. you know, people that they found work in a kindergarten or something. And, Could you be know. a stock website. If they really are designers... For some reason, if that's even true, then we apologize, but we doubt that they are. Well, if they're really designers for Darucci, yeah. I, that's what I'd like to know. But here's the very Chinese part of this. Have you noticed mm -hmm. that they've got these white dudes, okay, as their designers, very prominently displayed? Yeah. And the first guy, we don't need to say their names, but no. designer from Italy, okay? Next one, designer from France, yeah. designer from Denmark, and designer from Britain, in China, that means, by the way, the more like random foreign places you have designers for, the more, I don't know, prestigious, prestigious your company is because you have now design elements from all these different countries. But, you know, I think most companies would rather say something like, I don't know, Mercedes-Benz designed in Germany, right? Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't say, Mercedes-Benz, this is Hans from Germany. This is like, I don't know, Pedro from, you know, Brazil. This is, you know, they wouldn't have like, we have our Brazilian designer, this or that, the next thing. We don't, that's not important. No. But in China, having a foreigner or a foreign face attached to your business is so important. That's why Derucci itself has that old right. kindergarten teacher's face. It's so important to show and legitimizes your product so much to have these like random so foreign designers. faces. Yeah, so-called designers. And that's foreign why you forces. get these. Yeah. <laughs> you get these absolutely ridiculous losers in China. And I hate to say it, but you do. I'm not saying these guys in particular, but you do get these losers in China. They get such a massive ego yeah. because they are used for jobs like this. And they go around thinking 
they're super important where they're really not. They just have a white face. You, you know get what I'm that, talking that's about? That's really, uh, it came to fruition when you see the white monkeys working for state media now. Oh, they yeah. think they're so, they're so important. important. Or, and, yeah, but they're really not. I mean, they'll be, what they don't understand is the Chinese government will kick them to the curb in two seconds. Oh, yeah. As soon as you're not useful. Yeah, yeah. Which, they, of course, they will. Anyway, yeah. that's kind of a funny thing that they had to. Yeah, we don't know about these designers who just thought it was it's funny just, that they're advertising very, they're using Chinese ma marketing strategies in Australia. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, there's so many Chinese people in Australia now. Sure, and maybe it and works. Australia does belong to China in many aspects. So. Sure. Just kidding, Australians. Yeah. But not really. Clean up your house. What's going on? I'm talking uh, about the CCP influence, by the way. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? We got another Derucci sighting. Yeah, it was in SoCal, I guess. Somebody found a truck. I mean, people are finding these everywhere. It's shocking. I got questions about this dude's dashboard. What's going on? <laughs> what car is that? Uh, what's going on? He's got like some kind of a sunshade over that screen. It's like a robot's head. It looks like the Halo guy. <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks kind of interesting. Yeah, I wonder. We're we're into obscure cars. So what car is that? It's interesting. Yeah, it is. Maybe um, it's like a Prius or something. I'm, I'm, I don't. Or think maybe that's a Honda. A Prius. Whatever. It's just kind of interesting. But yeah, it's got some kind of a aftermarket sunshade going oh, on. Oh, you think that's aftermarket? Yeah, dude. It looks like that's been like stuck on there oh, to okay. extend it. That doesn't look factory to me. Hmm. Anyway. Anyway, my, our, our, uh, our detectives in the chat will, will know. Yeah. So it's time for us to move on and just answer Super Chats now. Let's yes, hit it. So what do we got? Uh, people are saying it's a VW. I uh, cannot believe that the word, this is from I, said, I haven't seen, cannot believe that the word positive energy or zheng neng liang originates from song shan mu. Oh, it does, does it? <laughs> and I got to hear it from your, your guys. Uh, rape ape hey. for the win. Yeah, I don't think so, because when I was working for the rapist, Song Shan Mu, by the way, I used to work for the ser mass serial rapist in China, mm -hmm. okay? He used to, he he latched onto some kind of a weird new agey thing that he was coming from either America or Europe somewhere. Yeah. And it was all about the no energy vampires on this bus. Yes. Have you heard about that crap? Yes. I don't know what it is, but like he latched onto that. Yeah, why? Um. Because I think it was a way that he could like control the staff. Oh, okay. He all he made them all mandatory. They had to read this thing, but he had yeah. his own spin on it. Right. So he was like, no energy vampires on this yeah, bus. Yeah. And, and he remember he was all about the that positive was a, energy. That was like a thing, though. Yeah. That, like that energy vampire thing was a thing at the time. Yeah, but he. Yeah. I think that's where he probably got this positive energy crap oh, or whatever. Something to do with that. Oh, gotcha. And gotcha. I think that he was like, if I rape you, that will like restore the energy balance or something. Right. Pretty sure. I mean, I'm he not even rapist, making that by up, the by the way. He was a rapist. Yeah, I'm not even making that Don't shit up. Don't ever take sure. that out of context. Yeah. <laughs> he was a rapist. Yeah, he was. A convicted rapist. Yeah, yeah he is. A terrible guy. I got a video. Jail. We don't know if he went to jail or not. No, he did. They claim. No, they claim yeah. he did. No, we but don't he got have any photos of him in jail. True. He only. He apparently only served two years, though. Oh, okay. For, like, mass rape of hundreds of women. Anyway, whatever. Um, anyway, Lonk says, Hello, see Milk Serpents today. You're both looking extra fresh this evening. Greetings from Germany. Thank you. Grab yourself some beer with us. Euro, please. Thank you very much. I will do. Thank, Thank you very much. David Lopin, the differentiation of the communist China is great. Oh, it certainly is. Great. Uh, get on Spotify. We are on Spotify. Yeah, we are. Go search us. Why don't you you get on Spotify and look <laughs> for us? Is it still under um, ADV Podcasts, though, I think? Let me pull it up. Yeah. Yeah, we've been on Spotify for, like, years now. Isn't that yeah. right? Yeah. Since we started, we yeah, tried it. Yeah, like, since the beginning. Yeah. The China Show, a podcast oh. on Spotify. Is that <laughs> us? Quite literally right yeah. there. Yeah. That's Very interesting. Sure. I never even looked at us on Spotify. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's all up. It's caught up, too. So. Yeah, it's even got disclaimers about COVID. Learn about COVID nineteen. On like every here. single thing. Why? Why? We didn't talk about it. Oh, look, some of them don't have it. Oh, very few. Isn't that weird? It's yeah. probably got some machine learning, and it hears the word COVID, and it's, and like, it's like, oh, woo, woo, woo. yeah, learn about COVID. Click here. There's actually a lot that don't have it. Good. Yeah, we're on yeah. Spotify. Yeah. Feel free to listen to us in your car or something. We're not monetized on Spotify, by the way, so we appreciate the people watching here right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But feel free to listen to audio as well. Yeah, we do that because we know that some people don't have the time to <laughs> sit and watch our show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I listen to audio podcasts as well as video podcasts. You know, I met this guy um, <coughs> during my initial road trip across America. One of our subscribers, a patron of mine, mm -hmm. and he used to watch our our like ADV China thing, like just the, the motorcycle adventure one. He used to watch that on his commute. 
He like had a cell phone mount and he used to watch it while he's driving. It's like that's appreciate a, your support. That's bad a very bad idea. idea. Yeah. Don't watch anything when you're driving. Audio but I mean, if he wasn't watching us, he'd be watching mm-hmm. other stuff. He was just one of those guys. Right. I uh, <laughs> podcasts I listen to, mm-hmm. um, for example, listen versus watch. I listen to a show called New Game Plus, which is okay. like some retro games one. But I watch a podcast called Bad Friends. Okay. And the reason is, is there's like certain things that you would want to watch the interactions, or they'll have media right. like what we do here. Right. And then there's some audio only shows like New Game Plus, like I listen to. You don't need to watch anything. No, about you can that, just listen right? to it. Yeah. Right? Okay, cool. So I think we could do both. I think we straddle both. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you let us know. Um, what do we got next? Sorry. Uh, Magister Generalis says, Hey guys, I really love the content that you both do individually and the streams you do together. Thank you. I always look forward to it. And I have a question. Do you guys, what do you guys think about Zambia building a monument for Chinese rail workers? Hmm. Uh, Belton Road is entrenched in Africa, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't like to see it. No, it is it is unfortunate. Hey, look, it is what it is. It's uh, neocolonialism. Yes. We, we've done stuff on it before. I've done stuff on it, and uh, we'll cover it more mm. in the future. We're getting attacked right now, by the way. Oh, we are? Yeah, like DDoS style. Oh, interesting. Uh, with lots of vulgar names of people like... They, they must have spent so long making all these email addresses. Yeah. Get banned, troll! Yeah, anyway. whatever. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. It's interesting. They so love we wasting said some, resources on us. <laughs> we said something they didn't like. Oh, yeah. Joshua King. I guess they don't like Darucci. That's what mm-hmm. we're talking about. Joshua King. I think they t- also don't like this whole UN thing. Probably. That is the, they're just probably waking up or something now, and they're like, no, they're no. talking about the stop. No one can hear about this. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joshua King. Someone in Taiwan is actually pissed off for once about damn time. It's about damn time. Yeah. Uh, Jim Flagg says, Taiwanese should be proud of their country. They are yeah. a country we can aspire to. Even the U.S. can envy Taiwan. I've always said this. I think Taiwan, Taiwanese democracy is, democracy is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I saw it in action when I lived there. I think their social benefits are fantastic. Yeah. Country's well set up. Mm-hmm. Great country. It is. It's fantastic. It's one of our mm-hmm. favorite places. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if I was going to go mm-hmm. live in Asia... Um, I'd live in Taiwan. Definitely Taiwan. Even though like, I'd prefer to go on a holiday to Japan, say, for instance. Yeah. But holiday. to live... To live, I would live in Taiwan. Taiwan is amazing. It's okay. amazing. Also, we speaking... Us yeah. being able to speak Chinese helps a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, for yeah, sure. That, that too. Will Smith says, um, CCP mind virus. Okay. Oh, maybe it's like the sonic, sonic wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Kearns, can we buy the Kuma Academy patches and stickers somewhere? I think you probably can to support their cause. Yeah, look into look it. Look it up. V Diddy says, give me your hot take on Fura Dai who live lavish lives in the U.S. but continue to remain patriotic towards China and anti-U.S. What hot take is F them. Yeah. Actually, you know, um, <clears throat> something I saw which I retweeted, which was quite an interesting thing, <clears throat> is like, is there a word for the... Many Chinese Canadians that have escaped living under totalitarian rule mm-hmm. in China to live in a free society like Canada, and yet at the same time want to force Taiwanese people to live under control of the CCP. Makes absolutely no sense. Is there a word for that? Probably hypocrite. Uh, uh, hypocrite, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the mainland Chinese people that make it out and live in freedom and appreciate the values and further yes, those values. Yes. Shout out it to doesn't them. make any sense, right? Yes. You escape to a, a free country. You move to a free country. Obviously, you're doing that for a reason. Yes. Okay, you're doing that because it benefits you more than living in the country you were born in. Yes. Okay, like I moved out of South Africa because there is no future for me. There is no hope. Sure. You know, and so I go mm-hmm. somewhere else because it benefits me. Why would I then take those particular benefits, like the freedom of living here in the United States, and then use those to try and oppress other people and force them into the bad situation I was in before. Yeah. Yeah. Not you know good. what I mean? Not good. It's dumb. It's like me coming uh, anywhere else in the world and trying to force people of my demographic to go to South Africa. I like, yes. go there. Go and go. Yes. Great. It's a great idea. You should go there and try to find a job. Yes. Great future for yourself there. Why don't you get rid of your nationality and go get a South African passport? It's great. Sure. Then you can really like explore the world. Not, you know, it's kind of a horrible thing to do to people. Shout so. out to the Ai Zi Yo, the Zhong Guo Peng Yo. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ai Zi Yo. Um, I am a Australian veteran, now disabled, but I will pick up a gun or two for my country for the US, UK, and Taiwan, said Nasadi. Nice. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Patriotism. Jitro says, big fan of all the work. 
you guys do for the common man. Thank you. A quick question about the good old days. What was the sketchiest road you guys traveled on in rural China, and how awesome or terrifying was it? Absolutely in Guizhou that or frickin... in close seconds in yeah. uh, Jilin. Definitely the Guizhou one. The Guizhou one. It was sure. raining. Yes. It was muddy, and this so-called road, <laughs> okay, <laughs> was more pothole than road. Like yeah. actually. There was more pothole than road that existed there. Yeah. If you were, if it was possible, deep, yeah, so if deep. it was possible to drive off road, but it's not because of the way things are set up sure. there, it would have been smoother yeah. to drive through like oh, these are virgin pots. bush. Yeah. But remember when we drove, it was like yeah. the entire way. You bent your wheel. I bent the rim of my wheel yeah. just going not even fast on no. these roads. It was horrendous it was for hundreds torture. and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers yeah hundreds. and then there was police remember that place was police on the road documenting yes. us every like mile or something yeah they had a police a with a notebook like after those plain clothes police stopped to talk yeah. to us yeah they it's radioed crazy. it in yeah but this and you're going through this the most depressing relentless like yeah. urban sprawl crap you go through these disgusting little I don't even know if they, if you class them as like a little town or something like that. You remember the concrete yeah. buildings? There's such beautiful places there too. Yeah. But those ones, my gosh. But those like relentless, yeah, no, relentless, and the, the weather didn't help. So yeah. it's raining on you. You're full of mud. These roads are horrendous. The trucks are trying to kill you. Like everything is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I wish we'd filmed more of it actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. Bit Majo says, I think the Kuma Academy chose bear as their logo because Taiwan has a unique native bear subspecies. That's true. That's why didn't correct. they call it Xiong Academy? I know. That's, I get why it's a bear because they have bears in Taiwan. Mm. But why not say Xiong? <laughs> well, the, the, um, I think about it. The guy who started is really old. Yeah. And the old people in Taiwan can all speak Japanese because yeah. of the old days when Japan yeah, no, I get it, ruled I get it. it. But it's also it's part of the culture. Japanese culture is very much ingrained in Taiwan. Yeah, this is a yeah. Taiwanese person, by the way. Yeah. Uh, by the way, what is your favorite animal mystical creature that you would guys want to make an emblem for yourself? I cannot, I'm not narcissistic enough to claim I have an animal that could represent me. But I do have favorite animals, for sure. sure. Um, mis favorite, what, what would I guess you'd be a snake. Pro probably a snake of some kind. Of your idea. thing, right? Yeah, probably. Well, yeah. What would you be exactly? I don't know. I like, um, I like aquarium. I have aquariums. I'm an aquarium fish? guy. Fish. You're going to be a fish? Sort of fish? Probably an octopus. Okay. I like uh, octopus. An octopus. Yeah, that's cool. They're cool. Yeah, interesting. Russell Thander, when can we expect another Playboy mag review? I don't know. I mean, we wanted to do that so bad. It was so much fun, but like the lackluster response we got from that kind of put us off. Yeah, like it's a we lot have of work. We have a limited amount of time, and it is a shit ton of work to make those. Yeah. I'd love to keep doing it, but nobody watches it. Yeah. The people that do, shout out to them. Yeah, yeah. we might bring it back. Yeah. We've got every Playboy ever, basically. Yeah, for sure. And my neighbor, when I first moved to America, mm -hmm. just kind of a strange guy, and he just came up to me one day, and he's like, Hey, do you want um, do you want some Playboys? I'm like, this is dodgy, you know, because he looked yeah. he kind of looked like the kind of kind of sus. He looked a little sus. Yeah. I'm like, um, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, his wife's ex husband left a bunch of play like a Playboy collection to inherit to the kids, but they don't want them because it takes up too much space. Yeah, and he was moving, so I was like, yeah, okay, I guess, because like we thought it would be cool to look through and see the old adverts for cars and stuff. It's kind of like time capsules, but I didn't realize, and he gave me like 12 boxes, like of every Playboy from the 70s all the way up until the early 2000s. It was 2000s. the hardest thing to put in the freaking U-Haul. Yeah. Because they don't take up much space, but they're so heavy. They're heavy. And they, I mean, it's 12 boxes though. Yeah. Okay. So we got- we brought like, them all with us We moved when we moved. Yeah. So. We got a ton. So we'll go through them. They're just kind of probably being eaten by rats in the shed right now, but hey, we've got them. <laughs> don't ask us how we know. They're not rats. They're mice. Okay. But well, they're- they're very, very annoying. That's one thing, the rodents here, they really do like to destroy cars and stuff. Yes. Annoying. Yes, because it gets cold. Yeah. Uh, hello, I've been watching. Because they're for... so vengeful because they're like, screw this cold, I'm going to go destroy his car just because he's in the do. warm house. Yes. They're like, you. They think about it. They're like, you bastard in that nice warm house with that <laughs> fireplace? I don't even take it out in your car. <laughs> That's what they do. Yeah. Think you could drive around with a heater on? Nah. -uh. And they're like, well, you might be able to kill me as well, but I'll make 10,000 more yeah, of myself. Yeah, exactly. I've been watching you guys for a while. Greetings from Poland. Also, can you explain to me who is this jaunty guy, the one that says great from Sulo? Oh, this guy? Nice.
He's just he's just a presenter who ended up on Chinese state TV for a while. Doing, we don't blame him. No, no, just doing kind of like he did a lot of fluff stuff for the Winter Olympics, and yeah. that's how we came across him. It is what it is. He, we just and we love just think he's demeanor. hilarious. Yeah, he's a and great he's, character, and he's very indicative of the the kind of person who just gets thrust into that yeah. job that they actually shouldn't be in. Right, and they, he, he doesn't strike me as someone that wants it to. Well, he's not. He's not a, what you'd consider a traditional presenter type. No, no. he doesn't fit that that role. No. But because he's a foreigner, they're like, yes, credibility, get him in there. And the guy's yeah. awkward as all hell. Yeah, and we love, we just love yeah, that. Yeah, no, he's him. a cool guy. Absolutely love, love him, but it just shows you how ridiculous the whole Chinese we, we media thing is. We think we do. We think, I'm always giving him the benefit of the doubt. We don't know that he doesn't want to do this, and we don't know that he's not a malicious shill. Yeah. But we can assume he's probably not. He seems, he he seems, seems fine. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, I'd have a pint with him. Yeah. Would you all get banned? He'll be like, you called me Quasimodo, screw you, and he'll punch me. Yeah. <laughs> Would y'all get banned from the soundbite of Trump saying China virus whenever uh, Dazek Wuhan or COVID comes up? I don't think so, but I think it's funnier to have ball sack. Yeah, much, much fun. You know, because like at the end of the day, if we start putting Biden and Trump clips in here, we're going to divide people very much. No, you know what, what will happen? What? All of a sudden, after we turn off the show, mm -hmm. right, we'll go into our living room and all of the TVs and the you know, the Amazons and all that stuff and our phones will look and it will be minions on there. Ugh. And all of a sudden, Imagine Dragons will pipe through the entire... <laughs> what entire is the sick house. fantasy you're having? <laughs> because anybody that is getting in a huff about Biden and Trump loves minions in Imagine Dragons, let's yeah, be honest. Probably. Yes. Uh, can you guys explain? Secretly. Like Secretly. In the, there'll be I some like... admit it. No, dude, I think some, like, redneck will be, like, in his massive lifted truck or whatever. You know, this guy, come take it from me with a yeah, AR-15. Yes, yes. He's listening to Imagine Dragons. He's listening to My Enemy. And he's got, like, a, a, a minion's, like, seat cover. Yeah. Just that he bought from yeah, AutoZone. But he says it's his wife's. Yeah, exactly. I bought it from my wife. Yeah, and he's, yeah, like, yeah. the sunshade that you put yes. on the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's like, exactly what it is. Come take it from me, and it's got a minion but with an AR-15. <laughs> yeah, minions. <laughs> Someone needs to find. There's gonna be a minion with an AR-15. There has to be. And he's listening to Imagine Dragons, the yeah. enemy song. Yeah, he's thinking of Democrats. Or there whatever. we go. Yeah. Uh, David says, "Can you explain a bit why Chinese netizens' idea of left and right is the opposite of the West? Like socially conservative and nationalism is considered left, and progressive is considered white. Do you know why? Because American definitions of right and left are completely irrelevant to what China or the rest of the world thinks of them. Yeah, uh, the American political division and the way that people have created this boogeyman in their head of their of the op opposing party and said that's just leftism, that's just rightism, whatever is bullshit." And not every country has to follow that. It confuses me, you know. Yeah. As a foreigner here in America, I see the the far left and the far right are both a bit kooky and weird and strange in their various ways. But it's hard to define what's going on. Yeah, it's also, I mean, I'm having a big problem with this because people are too scared and too ashamed to admit that they've been had. Yeah. And what happens is when people go in and think that they have absolutely nothing in common with their neighbor because they're a Democrat or Republican, right? Mm. When in fact they have so much in common, they're yeah. neighbors, they're both American, they sure. both love cookouts, they both love whatever, right? They both love Imagine Dragons, sure. <laughs> they both love Minions, right? Yeah, yeah. But they think that they're the mortal enemy and that somebody in CCP leadership or Russian leadership has more in common with them or their enemy is delusional. Sure. And what they've done is they've fallen for absolute bullshit, s separatist, crazy like um, fringe media that yeah. has now become almost mainstream. Mm. I'm watching people get picked off and bought and sold sure. like cattle in these uh, alternative websites. And now it's it's bleeding over to main mainstream. Yeah, it's, it's, well. it's just unfortunate. Now, to, to rewind, what I want to say is that um, that kind of fantasy about what leftism or rightism and all this kind of stuff that a lot of Americans have that don't understand the concept are mm. trying because they're obsessed with labels. These Americans are just so obsessed with having some I'm a I'm a radical centrist. I'm a, <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm far right, but I'm not racist about it. I'm far left, but I'm not a communist. You know, they got to have some sort of weird label on everything. And so when another country comes up, it's like, why don't I understand this? Because it's not my definition of sure. what this is. So people are so polarized and ridiculous. Yeah, it's Being like D&D &D choosing chaotic neutral yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You got to have something like a label, that. right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like ridiculous. actually some bleed over to mm -hmm. um, people that keep trying to make this big, huge thing about lying flat or bylon, the let it rot. 
and I'm having such a hard time, and I'm not trying to be rude about it to people, but I'm just trying to get across this idea of this label that you put on, this catch catchphrase or buzzword that you keep hearing about, it isn't necessarily a thing. Sure. Right? It's yeah, I'll be making a video about important. that next week, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we'll talk about that a little more in more depth. But yeah, you're right. It's kind of weird. I always thought right wing is supposed to be quite militant, but you find that the left wing here is very militant and very For sure. sort of like authoritarian and trying to you know, force itself on you a lot. So that confused me a lot yeah, in the beginning. Sure. You know, Bo both. Yeah. I think both extremes love authoritarianism. Yeah, they do. It's just like, yeah. listen to the, what we have to say and you must do our way of life. Sure. It's kind of lame. Anyway, you know, the, the, the thing I can take away mm -hmm. is that they love Imagine Dragons and Minions yeah. for sure. And the majority of people that I've met and that, that I interact with in America are fantastic. Sure. It's weird how it gets blown out of proportion. That's the thing. The average person's good. Yeah. If they're good, they're getting so Every, obsessed with such dumb shit. Everybody they're too embarrassed. I mean. They're too embarrassed to admit that they've been had yeah. by bullshit media that's that's pulling them in one direction when they're not that. Yeah. Right? They won't admit that. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, in general, the majority of the people that I've met and I interact with in America are very just nice people. Yes. And they're not extreme in any way, shape, no. or form. No. You see them trucks, though. <laughs> yeah, they stand there. They're like, Minions of the come take it. Yeah, <laughs> come take sure. it. You see them and trucks. The balls and then you, on the, But then you also see the, like, coexist yeah, ones with, sure. like... You know, all the LGBT stickers and everything. Sure. All over. So you see those going around. Yeah. It's like... It's They're like battling it out. Two sides of the same freaking coin, man. Right, right. You know? It's yeah. ridiculous. It's also people that have to put out their um, political inclinations on, on a bumper, bumper sticker. sticker. Yeah, that's it's a bad like, thing. I think... No, I'm, I'm not even saying that's not a new thing. Yeah. That shit's been going on since mm. I was a little kid. You know, I used to yeah. see that stuff. You see that's like the... Someone I saw the other day that like that coexist sticker, but it was uh, made out of guns. Oh my! It's like gosh. handguns and AR-15s and stuff. <laughs> but like, why? Why do you need to? They probably do thought that? they're really clever. It's so low class. <laughs> yeah, well, so is the coexist sticker. To be honest, sure. Okay. Yeah. Sick Let's lid. Move on. Love your channel. Can I get Thanks. like protect your? A what? Protect your. <laughs> protect your. I don't have a protect no, we'll your. We'll give you. We'll give you a. Sound. I got a. Port of Dandong. Nice. Shipping hub. Northeast China. <laughs> um, get a robo Schwinn. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all the rich Chinese students in my uh, area don't pick up their dog's poop. Is this common in China? Are they not aware? Is dog poop everywhere in China? It's more about the attitude that they're too important to do something like that. Mm. You have to understand that this whole classes thing that goes on in China, it's... It can be quite shocking and also quite upsetting if you're not used to it. But people that are in the service industry are treated like garbage. You know, waitresses and, and waiters, for instance. Mm -hmm. Or people that wash, wash your car or whatever the, the case. You know, like if you've got money, you're expected to not have to do anything and everybody else must do everything for you. Uh, and so I think they carry that attitude over to wherever they go. And they're like, I'm not picking up my dog's shit. That's for somebody else to do. You know? Right. Yes. Tacit turn, thank you very much. Lil Green Ghoul. I only took a few Benadryl great advice. I said take one, not a few Benadryl. Stop yeah. looping out on our show. Yep. Thank you for the support. Johnny Gills 28, could you guys explain the rationale mindset behind China's zero COVID policy? It seems unnecessary and impossible. It's a it's full on government state control. Um, and then it's also the other part of it is there can't be any admission that the government was wrong yes. about zero COVID. So they have, they can't backtrack on it. Right. That's the biggest thing. It's a loss of face. And also it's Xi Jinping's brainchild. It's like, he wants this to be a thing. He's yes. about to be sort of, you know, go through this big, there's this big thing coming up. Yes. And so if he's seen to have made a big mistake, it could really affect his future. So he's like, nope, D doubling down. Yes. We're the best. We're the safest country in the world because we did the zero COVID, you know, absolute nonsense, but they're not going to let it go. And who knows? They might never let it go at this point. Yeah, that's true. Um, Johnny Gill says, can you, oh, sorry, I just read that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Tessa Turn says, how can we put pressure on the UN to do the right thing? The CCP has no legitimacy within it, considering that the KMT were the signatory party. Mm. I mean, bring it up with your congressman politicians no, talk about it i mean it's yeah. it's stupid because they get away with this stuff because nobody opposes it right everybody just sits back in bewilderment and like oh why why is china allowed to do this why is china it's because nobody says that they can't you know yes um 
Dash Let, Juan Vega says, Dash Let was president of Chile, and she was very friendly to Latin American socialist governments or dem, uh, dictatorships like Venezuela and Cuba, who are allies to China. That might explain her cowardice. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's got something to do with it. Sure. Uh, tacit turn, is it possible to touch upon the fact that Xinjiang is just the tip of the iceberg in the vast Laogai network? <laughs> there are hundreds of locations. That's true. Mm. Um, and there are. It's, yeah. It, they're, yeah. 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 Uh, Utah skiing one. There are no lockdown in Bising Sea. Yeah, it's very yeah. apt. Yep. Uh, trust, underrated show, by the way. I watched mm. it as a joke. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah, Avatar I haven't seen thing. it yet. It's incredible. Oh, okay. It's so good. All right, I had I thought it was going to be terrible. Looks like a kid's show to me. It's so not. Okay. Tristan uh, Miacham. That's why people reference it so much. It's actually really deep. Yeah, I'll give it a uh, shot. Trin. I have a couple beers and watch a soda too and see nice. where it goes. What do you guys think of Peter Zahans? Who's Peter Zahan? Oh, Peter Sachs. I was <laughs> reading. Mean? No, I know Peter Zahan. I was reading as Peter Paul's. <laughs> when I hear <laughs> Peter, yeah, I'm yes. like, I was making trying to make a joke saying, who's Peter Dazak. Yeah, that's right. It's Balzac. No, Peter's a, unrelated. Unrelated. Yeah. He's a geopoliticist. Yeah. yeah. We've saw, seen some of his stuff recently. Comments yeah. about China's demographic, demographic crisis. He said that the CCP likely can't survive the decade given their demographic collapse, economic, and trade issues. I, I disagree. Yeah. Um, I think he makes a lot of great points. He, he uses a lot of facts and data, which is yeah. great. Yeah. One thing I think Peter is missing is the re pure resiliency of the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. The Chinese government just doesn't collapse overnight. That's, no. I did a video about this. It's not, you can't look at it from an, an American perspective. Yeah. If China, if America was facing the same problems that China was, it would America collapse. would collapse yeah. for sure. It would be overthrown. Yeah. China can't go through that same thing. They have ultimate control over the people. They will let half their population die before yeah. the the. More, most of the population died before the party collapses. Correct. The party will stay strong, yeah. will stay in power, yeah. and it will do anything it can to stay in power. I don't think people understand the resiliency of it. Yeah, it's not that it, it's not that people will rise up and it'll be like, wow, okay, look at China's become so weak. The party will remain strong. Yeah, and the military will be at their beck and call to <clears throat> just murder the citizens if they try to st stand up. So you yes. Know. Yes. You have to look into history and see. I did a video on that recently, actually. Um, it's worth taking a look at. Just go yeah. and take a look. You'll see. Go yeah. through my past couple of videos. And you did too. So. I did, yeah. yeah. Suzanne B says, uh, thanks for all that you show us, gentlemen. The video, by the way, is called like, China's about to collapse, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark. And uh, if you take a look at it, it explains that exact thing. You know, people were dying of starvation and their entire families were dying of starvation. They still didn't stand up to the CCP yes. then. So they're not going to stand up now. Yeah. Uh, Dadan says, hey, is that a, a Zoji Rushi bottle, Winston? It, it is. It certainly is. A real one. In Which, China, you get fake ones. By the way, when we lived in China, we thought that these were so posh. Yeah. Because you'd only find them in those very expensive it places. Like 200 bucks. Yeah, they were super expensive. Yeah. You buy them here in the States for like $30. And and it costs like, like $250 oh. in China. Yeah. Yeah. So you thought that's like some kind of really special thing. They're great, by the way. They are great. It's yeah. just I thought... That... I thought they were worth a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So when I saw them here, I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Why are they so cheap? Right. <laughs> uh, Hand of Jolly Jen says, uh, the United Nations hands are tied <laughs> in addressing the PRC violations of human rights because CCP has illegitimacy in the UN Security Council. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the CCP funds Putin's unnecessary war of aggression on Ukraine. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know what kind of world we're living in. It's just ridiculous that, you know, it's staring everybody in the face. Everybody can see what China's doing, what the Chinese government's doing. But for some reason, they just choose to ignore it. Yeah. It's probably because they've got their 401ks mm -hmm. invested in China. That's why. Sure. <laughs> you know, just let them do their thing. Who cares as long as I get my good returns, you know? Yeah. Uh, Walter Deadman says, in a world where you're either the cat or the ball sack, you better be the box straightener and the new shipping hub in yeah. Northeast China. Very good. Port of Dandong. That's I great. That be a box straightener. Yeah, you box should. straightener. Yeah. That's such bullshit, by the way. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's a job, I guess. It is. David Lepan says, uh, CCP undermining sanctions on Russia has allowed Putin to siphon off of China's economy, exacerbating their issues. Why are the people not resisting? You, there's. Why does everyone think there's going to be resistance? There isn't going to be resistance. No, it's there not will possible. never be resistance. Not, not within China. It's just not possible. No. You won't understand it until you've lived there. Yeah. 
the average person is not going to be able to stand up. And it's by, it's by design. Also, yeah. look at the bystander effect. Look at my last video. I showed that again. People aren't there, aren't going to help their fellow man because they're worried about repercussions from the government. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody stands up there and he's like, I'm tired of this, this injustice, I'm going to stand up. Everyone will just like back away. Yeah. They're not going to join him and say, yes, brother, let's stand up together. They'll be like, whoa, okay. I don't want to be near you because you're going to get into trouble and yeah. I don't want to get into yeah. trouble. By the way, and that's by design. It is. I think that's that's great. Um, it's not. I don't think that's great. I think your explanation is great. Yeah. You know how people say um, this like clown world. Mm. Like we, we've said that a few times. Yeah. We should start saying it's clam world. It's clam world. <laughs> I think that could yeah. be a thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's clam world. Um, <laughs> Will Smith says, "You know, Wang Win Bimbi ripping and tearing." Okay. I mean, it could be. Who knows? Sasha, it's awesome to finally be here live. By the way, CH is Switzerland. I always forget that. I always think Czech Republic. This is the country code. It's Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your work. Never stop ADV okating. Oh, I like nice. It. I like it. Advocating. So, so grateful for what you do. Oh, absolutely. Nice. Oh, nice. Sorry. Oh. I meant great. <laughs> so grateful you do. Subscribe. Yeah, please. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Thank uh, you. I think a lot of people rely on the algorithm to kind of recommend uh shows to them and we'd appreciate it if you subscribe keeps those numbers up don't say it i would never say it okay good smash the subscribe button <laughs> Come on. No, that's what you were saying no i didn't say that that's i told you, you not to say it that's what you, you did yeah mm. ryan g says did you hear bald and bankrupt was kicked out of russia did you see his sign off no it's actually pretty like heart-wrenching i didn't see it he said like i guess he got kicked out of russia right why did he expose there something or other I mean, it's like China, right? Yeah. It's kind of like us in China, right? Yeah. So you imagine, you know, that's got to be pretty heartbreaking. But he did a video and he said, stop living your life through people on YouTube and go make your own stories. And sure. I like, and he said, like, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of cool, though. It was kind of yeah. like burn the, burn the, what is it? Burn the boat? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Burn the boat. You got to burn that boat. <laughs> We were in that. Uh, that's a different story. Yeah, that's that's a funny story. That should have been in the worst uh, expats. Yeah, actually, video. you know what? After we did our worst expats thing on Shaban Ho, we then remembered that there were actually far worse expats that we just didn't want to talk about or we'd forgotten about because yeah. it was so traumatic. Yeah, yeah, like we our brains like pushed it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We might have a part two. Should we have a part two? We should have a part two. Not this Monday, but okay. Well, I mean, people might want it this Monday. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll do something else, but we'll maybe have a little segment where we talk about those really bad ones. Oh, but we have so many more though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be a thing. Yeah, the burning the boat one's kind of funny. I have the clip. You do. Let's do it. Come on. Yeah, we'll we'll add it okay, in. We'll okay. we'll see on Monday. Okay. We'll ask everyone uh, if they want that. We'll have two topics lined up. Okay. Join if you haven't already. By the oh, way. Oh yeah. If you have the means, go to patreon.com slash ADB podcast, join up the Shiaban Ho tier. You'll see our live show on Monday. It's super yeah. fun. Yep. Uh, Will Smith says, oh, we already read that one. Uh, Dalmatian Daisy says, have a happy Labor Day weekend. Thank you very much. Case of beer on me. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Uh, Bob Dobb says, my friend's biggest illusion that we're taught is that the Cold War ended in 91. In reality, the USR, SSR collapsed, but we uh, never abandoned those Reagan era policies and we kept fighting the Cold War. If truly is forever war. Okay. Itchy Kami says, careful reading your uh, Chinese friends' messages verbatim. I'm sure they can search it. Uh, that person was not in China. Don't worry. No, no. He's talking about the person I was talking to. Oh, that, yeah, was, my not phone. that was not verbatim. It wasn't verbatim. And also, um, well, I don't want to say who he is. But he's in, yeah, who he or she is. Who he is, she yeah. is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're in Shenzhen right now. Okay. But you're right. Don't worry. It's all uh, very secure. Stephanie Use B. Telegram or whatever. Stephanie B was very. It's Telegram. So Sorry, not Signal. Secure. It's so bad. Yeah. And you don't even use Signal. Use the other thing. Yeah. We use a lot of things. You I don't use, know what things we use. I used to use Telegram Signal. It's like a mixture of the two. Yeah, and that other like thing. Heavy end to end decryption. Encryption. <laughs> yeah, decryption. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie B, very generous of you. Thank you so much. Oh, Stephanie, wow. I'm sorry if you said, if you meant to send a question, but uh, we really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. That's that. incredible. Thank you so much. Ridiculous says uh, the Russians have a similar knife, the NRS 2, uses a silent captured piston type round SP3 issued to special forces. Still gimmicky, but kind of cool. It's gimmicky. We were discussing this. Like a knife gun is. Dumb. I mean, okay? it's like something you come up with when you're a little boy. Yeah, it's like 
It's going to be very inaccurate. It's yeah. only going to be useful at very close range. Yeah. But guess what? You know what else is effective at very close range? What? A knife. Or a gun. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> like, you have to be in stabbing range to yeah. actually shoot someone with it. Stab? Shoot! <laughs> yeah, maybe like a double shot. That's what you do in, in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. You hit R1 yeah. when you're, like, mid-slice. So you shoot the bullet while you're slicing. Yeah, yeah. You that makes sense. Just yeah. double it up. But, yeah, it's kind of silly. Walter Dedman, this food and genocide denier is a baby compared to some of the things that you guys have eaten. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, like, dude. Oh, well, I wouldn't call him a genocide denier. He was on the food well, trip. No, definitely. Oh, yeah, he was He's on the genocide, genocide denier. Trip. denier. Yeah. He was doing that whole, like, look at the cash cars, very velvety with the coffee that. and stuff. I Come on, dude. That. He was like, yeah. he was with the old man. He was with the old man. Definitely no, you a just genocide denier. Des- yeah. He's the Ken, he's the Kendall genocide denier. Yeah, Kendall Kendall J. Yeah, you know, like G-D. you should make a package where it's like genocide denial Kendall. Yeah, when he's like, yeah, yeah, he doesn't got, want to eat the twar. Yeah, it's got a bucket, you know. It's got twar. It's got. A <laughs> he's got. It comes with a spit bucket. Yeah, it's, yeah, like a cute bucket. Eat yeah, the Chinese yeah, food. Yeah, that's it. Or the Uyghur food. Yeah, uh, Lewis Randall. Hello from Guam. Hey. Always loved, but missed it due to the time zone lived in china for eight years but can't go back due to my job i would love to visit family in china again but not under ccp rule fuck the ccp absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. wow guam's a place i'd like to visit someday yeah malcolm senior thank you very much david lopan why why do you have a pagan's knowledge of botany (laughs) wolf's Wolf's bane yeah what's the other one like oh cock chafer beetle by the way it's yeah what about a cock chafer it's a maybe may bug it's like a it's kind of like why is it called a cock chafer beetle do you, I, we used to see these in uh, L.A. Do you remember they have that like wispy like? Oh, that thing! Oh, they like, make like hissing and stuff. Yeah, it's what, called a cock chafer. What is the entomology? Um, yeah, like I'll say, why is it called a cock? Why is it called a cock chafer? Is the first thing mm. uh, derives from 17th century usage of cock uh, in expressing size or vigor, and chafer, which simply means an insect of this type referring to its propensity for gnawing and damaging plants so it's like a big chewing thing okay Cock chafer come on guys you know what you're doing you know i got a That's you a know a mate thing. who lives in england and he lives next to this place called Ticklecock bridge yeah it's a real place Ticklecock bridge yeah mm. yeah and it's exactly because of that reason yeah because it used to be where like uh I think male prostitutes used to hang out or something there's some reason they would tickle that. i don't know man they wouldn't do anything there's some weird tickle. stuff in the uk yeah like Grope cunt lane. <laughs> yeah. And it's, by the way, that's real. You can don't look it up. say I shouldn't use that word. That's a name of a road. Yeah. It's I, still there? I think they may have renamed it recently. Let's see. Yeah. But yeah, there's some strange stuff in Old England stuff, you know. I didn't make that up, right? No, yeah. that's real. It's a name found in English towns and cities in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages. They've yeah. changed it recently. Yeah. But I mean, it's on freaking Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. Some, but Ticklecock Bridge is still there. Yeah. Someone launched a petition to bring back Grope Cut Lane. <laughs> oh, interesting. That, this used like to be the pro- prostitute lanes or whatever. Yes. Yeah. That's what it's called. very vulgar. It's like so direct. Yeah. Why can't you call it something else? I don't like, know, man. Like Get Lucky Bridge, you know? It's like... That's some weird names in, in Old England, you know? It's just, it is. It's, it's weird. You weird, walk around, yeah. walk around and like, I don't know, I was walking in Oxford or something near some... You know, like a grave graveyard, and some of the names on the gravestones were really baffling to me. Were they? Yeah, it's like side bottom and stuff. You know, like really weird <laughs> names. Like, you think he had an ass on his side? I, I don't know, man. But there right. there is some interesting. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Bone Grinder says the chat hasn't suffered enough tonight. Would you like me to be the cat? Oh no, please. Now, would you like me? To be the cat. <laughs> it's it's so coming back. Gross. We've got a new clip. We've got another shill that went on his show. So we're going to have to show that to you again in the future. Yeah. Um, holy crap. What? It just snapped bad. Oh, you did? Um, what okay, is this, sorry. by the way, just Don't. in case? Oh, never mind. There was some other nonsense. Please don't play that. I just wanted to... No, I just like, you know, I'm trying to see what other. It's not probably not when things. we're live to experiment with random buttons. I mean, yeah. That's fucking outrageous. Yeah. Here, let's continue. Yeah. Um, Doc Slothington, old Doc says, not to be one of those people, but entomology is a study of insects. Exactly. So, what do you What's call the it? What's the entomology? That's what we're <laughs> yeah. saying, Doc. We're looking up freaking grope cunt bugs or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Cock chafer. Cock chafer bugs, yeah. sorry. Uh, and. and Etymology is a etymology. Of words. That's what it I meant. Fired off my old sensibilities. <laughs> yes, that's what I meant to say. For sure, but we, you did mean entomology because yeah, we the looked bugs. at bugs. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. bugs go on wolf's bane. Yeah, they do for sure. 
Yeah. Tokoloshi98 <laughs> says, uh, so-called water cooler man has violated one of the seven principles of self-respect due to the influence of dark forces. <laughs> yeah. Tornado Brick, uh, talk China, Cambodia, uh, foreigner kidnap scam, please. I'm actually working on a video about that. Andrew B., my Taiwanese friend referred to TCM as roadkill medicine. Someone should go get their dead skunk. It'll make good medicine. Sulo says, can you explain Jaunty? Oh, we did. Yeah. Uh, H. Precaut, uh, Preciado says, thanks for staying awesome and give me talking points against the Mexican China tankies. Right. So sure that China is doing it right. Thank you cool. very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Keys, hi, friends. Fight the good fight. It's tough when you're dealing with tankies. They've got no common sense. And they just speak out of their asses because they've never been there and they don't experience what it's really like. They've never been oppressed like the people in China are. They don't understand it. They think it's a great system. Sure. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's good, you know? Right. That's the key is it's 97 degrees right now. Kicking back, drinking an IPA. Hen hao hao chi. Oh, you yeah, man. Hen hao hao chi. Hen hao hao chi. It's about 80 degrees here. Yeah, so we don't still need hot. To, we don't need to kick back. Yeah, it's still still pretty hot. Sydney yeah. Chapman, a, hey, guys, late uh, today, finally getting over the CCP virus. Mm. At Cronus, I hope you feel better. Yeah, At Cronus, feel better. Money for you, the show. And the mod work in the live comment section. He's working overtime today. Stay awesome. Yeah, they they went after us. Today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Zushikate Tamoto Shift. Pretty sad that CCP bots are here. Yeah, they went ape today. Oh, they did. Yeah. Yeah, you should have seen the chat. It was insane. Mm. It was a proper like coordinated attack. Right. You whenever you talk about something they're not happy with, you know, like yeah. this UN thing, they're really not happy. I think it's about the that. UN thing. Mm. Really they good. hate it. Yeah, they're really mad. They're really like, oh, you know, finally this governing body that they thought that they'd taken over and had complete yeah. control over did something naughty, you know? And they're like, well, how dare you? This is the way I see it. Bite is the that hand that feeds you. The people think we're so, you know, we're so out there for talking about this kind of stuff. The global shift has really just not aligned with what we're, we, what we've been saying, kind of everyone's coming to a consensus. Yes, this is a bit massive issue. Yeah. We're not like uh, a needle in a haystack anymore, so to speak. Yeah. The global leadership is kind of, a lot of countries are coming around mm. on, on the problems that the Chinese government's posing to the world. And I think that uh, that poses a huge issue because it's not two fringe people. Yeah. Right. It's mm. the consensus. Sure. When the consensus is against you, you're going to lose your shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you guys heard that TikTok got their hands on Japanese soldiers' photos from Nanjing, from Inu Batan? Uh, I heard that right before the chat, but I haven't looked into it yet. What do you mean? TikTok? Yeah, there's something about um, some Nanjing photos. I know somebody is selling a book of his yeah, grandfather's something, yeah, or something that's, that's got. That. Yeah, it's probably that. It'll be uh, interesting, but probably horrific to see. Yeah. Yeah. Geez, see what comes of it. Holy crap. See what, see what comes of that. Like yeah. That. Cindy Chapman, my Chinese friends told me that they plan to retire back in China. They will be surprised, won't they, by the changes? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's a little different than maybe when they left. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, it's this, a lot of people have that idea. And it makes sense. I mean, think about it. A lot of uh, migrants that come to America or other countries from China, it's, it's all about economics. They know they can make more money here. They can... I also think mm -hmm. that... I've heard, not I think, I've heard a lot of people being incredibly shocked and disappointed that they're not going to go back to this propaganda paradise that they've been reading about in Chinese media here in the U.S. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's the thing. Uh, give an anecdote. I met someone who was the father-in-law of some friend of mine, Chinese friend, who left China and escaped mm. China back mm. in like the 70s or something like yeah. that. Or the, yeah, yeah, in the 70s. So he escaped. He actually yeah. like fled and hopped over the border yeah. and ended up in America and made a very good life for himself and his yes. whole family over here. But he is so nationalist about China. Yes. Yeah. And he thinks that China's amazing and he right. can't After wait he fled, to... Right? Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to go back. He keep, Well, he keeps going on about how much better China is than America. After fleeing and talking well, bitch, shit about you it. you fled like <laughs> yeah. back in the day <laughs> yeah, yeah. when it suited you. I, I know a lot. I know quite a few people like that. I know yeah. someone that was shot at... Yeah. In the mountains of Guangdong to run away to Hong Kong. Yeah. Loves Hong Kong, loved the West, loved freedom, loved democracy. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden flip flopped and now thinks China is the greatest thing in the world, even though it starved him almost to death and he yeah. had to run away to Hong Kong to feed his family. Yeah. Because they look at this and I guess it's a, the, the kind of people that would do that are opportunists. Yeah, I suppose. You know, so they're like, oh, look, I could. Also, uh, they, they read into the propaganda. That's all yeah. that there is. When you increase the amount of propaganda, that's the only thing they're consuming. 
Yeah. Right? Somebody needs to put a handbrake on that stuff. You know. Anyway, well, just saying. Slow down. Um, no, the fact yeah. of, the fact of the matter, <laughs> the fact of the matter is what? I just yeah, remembering yeah. the word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> The you know, fact, both situations yeah. actually work. The context yeah. for both stories yeah, they works do. perfectly. They do. But at the end of the day, um, it is true because if you constantly consume this media about like, look at how China's mm. leading with its infrastructure and its high-speed rails and its green yeah. technology and all of this technology and all this other nonsense and you see the skyscrapers and you see all the, yeah. all the outwardly facing propaganda from China looks incredibly impressive. And unless you've lived there and actually seen that it's just a facade... Yeah. And it's hollow, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. it looks super impressive, you know, and China has done a lot of impressive things. I'm not trying to poo-poo some of the things that they have done, which are significant. But when you look at this stuff, if you don't know it, if you haven't lived it, it looks incredibly attractive. So I can understand why someone who fled in the 70s is looking at this and saying, wow, look at how powerful and great China has become. Well, you know, I'm Chinese, you know, so I've got something sure. to be proud of. I should go back. Sure. And they're going to be sorely disappointed, though. Yeah. Yeah. Montes Farmer yeah. says, how worried should we be about Russia and China doing joint military exercises? Is their military like their ghost town tofu dreg buildings? In in some ways. Mm. Um, not much you can do. I mean, you can't just worry, go around your life worrying about everything, yeah. right? It's, you're not going to have any control over it, right? Sure. I would say it sucks, and I don't like to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan A. Lair says, Amazon app is hijacked by Chinese uh, Chinese language is now taking place of some English words in the iOS app, and I can't change. Caution, buying till fix. It could be faked. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Shift says... Well, Amazon's been overtaken by Chinese sellers. Oh, ages ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the majority, isn't it, now? Yeah. Like I'd, selling bootleg I'd stuff. Probably. And I remember um, I went to a couple of these business um, kind of, what would you call it, conferences and stuff in yeah. Shenzhen, where mm -hmm. they were... Teaching people, right? Basically teaching people how to do this. And it... It is incredibly unfair because most Chinese, I mean, most Amazon sellers, you get people, that's what they do for a living. Yeah. They would come to China to try and source products. They yeah. set up an, an Amazon shop page. They do, do everything legit. But as soon as they started to get a market, then the actual um, factories and the, the actual Chinese uh, producers of these things would just poach all their clients and stuff and start selling direct. And you can't compete because of the... Just the huge amount of resources that these people yeah. would have that have immediate access to the uh, factories. They'd also be able to ship using the subsidies and stuff that the government put in place. So they would undercut all the other sellers. Yeah. So, you know, it's tough. Shout out to Acronis, by the way, in the chat. It says, drop the drag. Drop, drop the, the drag. drag. Yeah, drop the drag. I like it. Just call it tofu, yeah. Um, well, this <laughs> is... <laughs> You just say it's call it tofu, tofu ja? No. Tofu drag? Jia. Oh, it's ja. Jia, gotcha. not, not ja. Everything that was pushed for 2025 and 2027 is pushed to 2022. Jeff Gordon, you mean the NASCAR driver, says, at China Show, uh, the China Show, would either of y'all ever do a World War II in China vid? It's seen as a separate or forgotten segment of World War II Chinese history. Yeah. I mean, I, w I would like to. Uh, I've definitely touched on it yeah. in, in some of my videos. Yeah. I talk about it quite a lot because it is a, a fairly forgotten part of Chinese history. And it's interesting how the Chinese Communist Party somehow claims that they are the ones who defeated the Japanese and drove them out of China and that kind of thing. Yes. Um, and they also forget the fact that the West backed them up, seriously sending in aid, risking lives to help, you know, the Chinese at the time. Yes. They forget about that very uh, conveniently. They forget about that a lot. That's so right. So it's probably time to remind them. Uh, it's only fair. Yeah. Shift says, you've been warned, September 2022. Oh, what's that? I don't know. Sounds like okay. a doomsday. <laughs> Lilla Farley says, I'm moving back to LA late October. Let's give the people what they want. And talk about Shi Teller, Zhou Tsai, um, who is Xi Jin, love and drugs, I'll drive to. Well, Lilla, yeah. we've moved, so you're not going to be driving to us there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to meet up, we should meet up now um, yeah. before you move because you're quite a bit closer to us right now. Yeah, let's meet up. We've got to do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We can uh, always fly back. No, I'm. He's in DC. We oh just, yeah, yeah. We can oh, yeah, true. Now. I'm just saying, like in the future, I'm, sure. I want to still go back and For sure. you know plans to get, take the family there to Universal Studios and stuff. That's true. That's true. At some point. Yeah. Iterative rampancy. Winston, the words you're looking for is cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mike Mikhail Gorbachev passed away recently. Would yep. there ever be a Mikhail Gorbachev that liber 
liberalizes the CCP. Yeah, hey, we, we hoped. We hope. Does the CCP leadership really think they can still invade Taiwan after seeing Russia's failure in Ukraine? Mm. Maybe in some way. Uh, I mean, look, they definitely tried to bluster all their nonsense by shooting all the fish around the island to protest, you know, the Americans visiting and so on. That'll um, put a Band-Aid on it for a yeah, while. Yeah, that's enough for them to kind of kick the can down the road because yeah. at the end of the day, they, they don't actually want to invade. And the reason being that they'll end up probably losing the reason they want Taiwan in the first place, which That's is right. the infrastructure. They want the factories and they want all the the cultural treasures and stuff. And if they bomb it all to hell, then it's no, no point, right? Yes. So they want to kind of coerce Taiwan to come back peacefully or not come back to join because they never were a part of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lightseeker says, hey, John T, what's, what are the PRC kids caught, taught from day zero? Great. Hate. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, David Lopin says, 100, 100, Legend of Korra is better than Avatar. David, you have some hot takes on movies and shows. You said it's like Game of Thrones. Legend of Korra, let me see. Oh, I heard that was good. Isn't that by the same people? No idea. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it for sure. Sias um, says, Cry Ball Sack. P. P tier ball sack. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, nice. Uh, get emoji quiz there. Been watching this since 2016. Keep up the great work from people. Oh, Cuba. good stuff. Great. Good stuff. Uh, Bone Grinder. The chat hasn't suffered enough tonight. Oh, we already read that one. Yeah, we did. Dylan G. Crap. Why do you do this, YouTube? That Russian guy you mentioned uh, reminds me of the Shinzo Abe memes. Don't admire kids. Make your own. And I'm out. Would make a good tribute of him. V V J N Y C says, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Doc Slothington says, there is a Big Bone Lick State Park in Kentucky. Big Bone Lick. That is not. Well, remember, a good name. remember, we were riding our bikes in, in Southern California, and there was that place called Hell Hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it's super actually hot. called Hell yeah. Hole. Nature we did, we did a video right after that, or like yeah. during that. It was like the Russian. We found Russian. Yeah, white Russian Chinese people or something. But it was actually called hell hole. Hell hole. Yeah. You're like, what is this hell hole? Yeah. And it was really hot and horrible. <laughs> yeah. We got out of there immediately and went mm -hmm. back up north. Um, Zook Shift says Trojan Condoms has a street called Trojan. I don't think that's named after Trojan Condoms. <laughs> no. Totally honest. <laughs> Probably Believe not. it or not, Trojans were a people group <laughs> yeah. in history. Yeah. Walter Deadman, if only the water cooler man actually brought forth quenching diplomacy a great walter yeah that'd be nice bob Dodd, we don't realize that the u.s is in a perpetual state of war in 2012 they repealed a post-world war ii law on inserting propaganda in american media is caught up in the cold war hysteria we must listen we learn from vietnam vets like okay bob thanks ridiculous simo can you watch perun's analysis of chinese military he is saying that they're actually a serious threat he is a military analyst channel. What is? I've never heard of that channel. Yeah, I never said that the Chinese military was not a threat. By the way, no, of course it's a th it's an absolute threat. It's just not as powerful as they make it out to be. Yeah, that's that's what we're trying to say. And that is actually part of a very famous um, person you may have heard of called Sun Tzu and the Art of yeah. War. You may have heard of that guy, Chinese uh, strategist from a very long time ago, back you know when China yeah, had culture. Um, and uh, something he said was, when you're strong, appear weak, and when you're weak, appear strong. Yeah. And that's why you see the Chinese military going, jumping up and down, look how strong we are, shooting missiles in the sea and showing off all their sure. tanks and all their crap. It's because they're following that doctrine of when you're weak, appear strong. That's right. Mm. Uh, jo jo Joseph Cortez says, uh, also saw another super chat talking about Perun. I'm going to help us comment with my. I just opened up another tab. I'll look at the channel. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Andrew B., what is uh, Falun Gong's beliefs like? I don't know. <laughs> look it up. Wikipedia. Some kind of breathing exercises. It's like Tai Chi or yeah, something. Some yeah, but then, there's but some then they believe stuff. they, I don't know, you can fly around and cure cancer or something along those we, lines. I haven't confirmed that because I haven't looked enough into it. I'm but pretty sure that is. I think that's there's some weird shit going on. Yeah, but yeah. whatever. Uh, Kevin Suggs. Hey, whatever floats your boat, you know. I mean, yeah, go for it. Do you it. You want to be Scientologist and believe in a volcano alien or something? Is it a volcano? 
Yeah, well, it cl- crashed into the volcano. Oh, right, right, right. And alien spirits going See, to I don't know much about that I either. I mean, and that's the thing. <laughs> I do like, know. What? That a bunch of teenagers trolled Scientology so good yep. in LA by getting one of those massive light projector things, and they were putting it on their building, like, oh, yeah? Scientology sucks or something. I don't, don't remember what it yeah. was. Something hilarious. And they kept moving around. It wasn't illegal because it's not vandalism because it's just, just light. light yeah. And they were calling cops. All these cops are showing up, and the cops are like, they're not doing anything illegal. Yeah. And they couldn't find where they were they kept moving around it's pretty funny. yeah uh, i knew some of some scientologists when i grew up there are actually a lot of them in south africa i met so many south africans that were involved in bizarre religious stuff yeah like lots of scientologists or i should say x because they would leave and then they would go to taiwan to right. teach in a huge chunk of um huge chunk of uh what, a, what jehovah's witness yeah massive chunk yeah, you know, you know, like in America in the eighties, you had the Satanic Panic. Yeah, that was a real thing in South Africa. People actually did murder people. Like they, unlike they in America, did the rumors. They actually yeah. did. Like the whole Satanic Panic thing was real it in was South real, Africa. Like yeah. Satanists were going out and killing people and right. stuff. Um, some pretty uh, good cases if you want to read up on that. Yeah, you know, like that didn't happen in America. Yes, it was just a bunch of shit. No. But because it, I don't know how, like it's weird how the news would filter in from America and then somehow legitimize certain things, <laughs> and, and like, people would be you like, know "That thing that didn't happen, let's do it." Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> oh, this is we're going to be part of this big thing. They're rolling D and D dice to actually sacrifice a lamb, dude. Like the funniest thing was in Cape Town. Um, you know, the, there's this huge colored. Please, please be funny and not something really messed up because your no, South African no, sense no, of humor no, it's, is really it's, dark. It's it's funny because, anyway, on the Cape Flats, okay, you got yeah. this huge population of coloreds. They're called yeah. coloreds, by yeah. the way. That's not like some kind of slur. That's it's actually legal who term, they are. Yeah. Okay, they're called interesting, Cape coloreds. Interesting, very thing. interesting group of people. Um, and I remember my dad at a snake park, which was in the you know um, close by. And every Saturday morning, we drive there. But it was a very interesting thing because. It's, it was a very impressionable time. So depending on the movie that you would see um, on the weekend, the play on TV would kind of equate to what chaos you'd see the next day. <laughs> so right. one time they played Mad Max, and I remember driving, you know, to go to my dad's snake park on Saturday morning, and there were just cars crashed everywhere. <laughs> oh, really? Seriously. Because <laughs> people people would be, like, getting really drunk and stuff uh, okay, and yeah. watch Mad Max. And it's then like a blue-collar community, right? Yeah, and then yeah. they'd be like, hell yeah, and then yeah. try to impersonate that. Right. So, you know, depending on what would be shown, you would see the after effects on the Saturday sure. morning. It was kind of funny. That's interesting. It's yeah. kind of like people messing around in, like, the you know, like a more redneck area and like going mud or something, but they're doing it like in a city. Yeah, but I mean, you have to also understand that like it's a different situation because in South Africa, you'd see these like Hollywood movies and stuff and you'd be thinking like, wow, that's so cool. That's yeah. real, you know, like or right. it's something to look up to and admire and something right. to like try to be and do. Because it's kind of special. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, because, yeah. you know, like you don't have great South African cinema or something. Right. So Get you, ready for people. I can't believe you haven't seen... <sighs> I, man, oh my word you don't want to even know about south african cinema you showed me you showed me some stuff it was really yeah, bad yeah it's it's bad man it's like yeah. theater and all that stuff is it's awful people are gonna be like what about district nine yeah whatever man like that's what not even we? a good movie i thought it was good it's like, well okay anyway the fact of the matter is it was kind of interesting to see just speaking of like how that can people could be affected that way yeah yeah um uh, no, we're probably not going to do videos like that. Thank you for asking, though, Kevin. Chronic and Ironic got briefed by the M... What's the MC Pon? I don't actually know. Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. Okay. You got briefed by them, and you give us a super chat. Thanks. Appreciate yeah, that. Thank <laughs> you said you. war by 2032. Oh, okay. That's cool. Tell them to make a public statement, and then we can actually quote it. Yeah. Uh, J- Jowis. Legend of Korra is a great show. Oh, it is, it is it? For sure. Oh, no, where is this? There. Nice. Is it a nice show? Oh, it's okay, it's nice. Uh, I think great. it's great. Probably, okay, probably okay. great. Kakrakrush says Beyond Meat. Oh, it's like the yeah, Big Beyond Meat Butter. or whatever. Oh, I just remembered another Saturday morning. Um, and it was kind of, they played a Bruce Lee Kung Fu movie. And the next morning, everybody was like beating each other up with karate moves and stuff. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Because they're emulating the Bruce Lee. Yeah, and my my dad had a friend who worked as a nurse in the local hospital, and there were like tons of injuries. I'm not <laughs> even. I'm not like, making this up. I, know, I, I believe you. Because there was like a Bruce Lee kung fu movie and the next day. Because look, it's a heavy drinking culture in South Africa, yeah. especially down in the Cape Flats. So that's got a lot to do with it. So people sure. would be like, 
you've you, you've seen I've shown you like some of the cultural things like the the interesting car like stuff yeah. they do yeah and yeah, it's, all it's cool. part of it's all part of culture so like they get like like horribly wasted and mm. then emulate whatever was on TV because that's what you do when you're drunk right so it'd be like Bruce Lee yeah. guess what we're Bruce all gonna Lee. we're all gonna do like kung fu on each other right and that would happen like, um, take it too far yeah my like it was an interesting time I remember in. In the late Saturday evenings, because I used to sometimes go with my dad to the snake park, and I'd probably five years old at the time. <clears throat> Six. By the way, a snake park is where snakes go to play. Yeah. Yeah. He had a reptile park. He used to have snakes and crocodiles and stuff. And uh, I remember there was this back area where I could stand up on some tanks where my dad was breeding uh, horned toads. I think they're yes. called platanas. They're like yeah, these I know what, I know what that weird, is. like tooth clawed frogs. Yeah. They're actually gross, slimy things. Pretty vicious. Yeah, they're slimy little things. You hold them and they're like out yeah. of you. Anyway, they're very annoying, yeah. right? They're like a pest, but for some reason you breed them and export them, right? Yeah. I used to stand on this and look over the wall and there was this parking lot just like kind of over the wall, a little bit in the distance. And on a Saturday night, um, people would get together there and they'd like rent cars. They'd like rent a car, like Avis rent a car or whatever, but the budget, like U-Haul type thing, right? They'd rent cars and then they'd just sit around and I guess this was in the 80s, so they didn't have much else to do. They'd sit around, all the family would get there with blankets, sit down, all drinking and they'd do donuts in their rent cars. And nice. just like that was sounds like a good time. Well, it it evolved into something pretty cool. Yeah, I don't you know if you've me. seen the colored. You did. Like, you me. It, yeah, I showed you where they do that thing. They hang out of the it's car. It's crazy. You know, like it's pretty well, dude, talented. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I saw the the genesis of that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, beyond anyway, Beyond Meat had a Shamata girl in their YouTube ad. Oh, they That's did. Pretty crazy representation. Huh. I love it. That's cool. Bob, I can't cure your. <laughs> What's that? Uh, it's another one of these. It's okay. Thank you for donating. Yeah, anyway, thanks. guys, we'll see you on Monday. Is that it? That's it. Fantastic. Guys, absolutely love having you here. It's fantastic. Brilliant that you're part of this very important conversation. Thank you for joining us. We can't wait to see you uh, on Monday in Shaban Ho. If you are yeah. part of the Shaban Ho little group that we have, if not, don't worry. We'll see you in our other videos during the week, and we can't you wait. Betcha. So have a fantastic weekend, all of you. Yes. And uh, stay awesome. I'm not going to cut myself off. I'm going to count myself down. Five. Four, three, and...